What's going on? What's going on? Let some people trickle in here. I need some more people. If, if you haven't done so yet, share, share this. Let everyone know that we're going um, live right now and we're doing this webinar. I know that lessens the chances of it being one of you guys. What's up, Garrett? Um, but share it out there. Let's get some more people in here, um, as many as we can. I'm not expecting there to be a ton because of the fact that, you know, it's last minute, but um, at least at least a good amount. So let's try and get some more people in here and then we'll get started. Um, between now and then, what I'd like to do is I would like to just do some Q&A while we get some more people in here. You guys go out there, share this. Let's try and at least get maybe 30 people in here or something like that. Um, I, I don't really know, but uh, let's, let's, let's push it out there. Let's put it on IG, put it everywhere, um, get the link to as many people as we can to get in here and at least register to have the chance. And uh, I think that's only fair for, for everybody, even though it's last minute. So um, awesome, Lisa. Orlando, I'm, I'm from uh, Northwest Florida, but I'm from Citrus County. Or I'm in Northwest Florida. I'm from Citrus County originally, just west of Orlando. Got a lot of users in Orlando though. Um, love that area. Obviously, Disney's there who can't love Orlando. But um, also, John Travolta lives there, so that's that's also a benefit. <laughs> Big John Travolta fan. Um, so yeah, let's 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 get some more people in here. Let's share it out there. Uh, until then, uh, let's go ahead and look down here and see um, what kind of stuff we got here. So on the bottom, uh, just I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with Zoom, but let's go ahead and cover a few key things here so that you guys um, can get more familiar. I mean, I don't know how someone couldn't be too familiar because zoom just beat out like every airline. I think they're worth like 45 million now, which is ridiculous. Um, so let's, um, let's do the Q and a, try and use the Q and a tab. If you look at the bottom, uh, black bar, you see participants, Q and a polls, uh, the chat and all that stuff, click Q and a and, and ans ask your questions in the Q and a chat so that I can see a poll of them. And then I can just go through, answer them and then click confirm. Uh, as we go here. So let's go ahead and, and get it out there and get it rock and rolling. Did you happen to get the payment thing figured out yesterday? Not sure what that means. What's up, Webb? What's going on, Mike? How you doing, buddy? Um, what's up, Alberto? Let's get some questions in there. Um, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to um, grab, well, I already got my water. Well, I'm just going to see what my daughter's doing real quick and then I'll be right back. And then hopefully we got some people in here until then. Uh, hopefully, yeah, there'll be a replay, Samantha. Um, definitely post your questions in the Q and a until then I'm just going to share my screen so we can get uh, rocking and rolling uh, here. I'm going to close out a few. Actually, let me finish sending out this email. Actually, I'm going to leave that there. Close this out. Close this out. Close this out. Close this out. Um, I think that's pretty good. We're open up prop stream as well. List source. Um, and then we're gonna open up a Google link. We need REI SIF naturally, and then we're gonna use smarter contacts for the campaign. So we're gonna have that. Um, I think that's all that we need. All right, cool. So let me go ahead and share my screen and then we'll start rocking and rolling. Let's get some more people in here. Let's share it. Let's get this rocking. Um, and I'm going to be right back. Share screen. All right, y'all, I'll be right back. Um, keep asking the questions, keep filling up my Q and a, I only got three things in there. There has to be more questions than that. If there's, if you're in here, then you should have some sort of question. Otherwise you want to be here, right? You'd have something, something you don't know, uh, ask it. All right. I'm not going to uh, settle for, for less than at least a bunch of Q and a. Okay. All right.
All right. Man, how do we lose somebody? I left at 28. Now we're at 27. What kind of, oh, there we go. We're at 28 again. That could be a new person. Whoever left, shame on you. Unless you're back again, then we're okay. We're okay. All right. So um, Q&As are rolling in. Um, that's good. Will there be a replay? Yes, I answered that. There will be a replay. I'll go ahead and click answer. Um, who's messaging me? Chad, you're in here, Chad. You're here, bro. Yeah, you're good. Um, have you wholesaled in the Miami market? I heard it's crazy. Um, I have not wholesaled down there. I do know some wholesalers down there. We have a few REI users down there, um, especially just like Fort Lauderdale. A lot of guys in Fort Lauderdale market down in Miami um, in general. Yeah, totally. Uh, great market, but you got to do it smart or else you can lose a bunch of money. Um, I work full time, nine to six. By the time I sit down to start cold calling, I can only do about an hour or so. Should I hire a cold caller? This isn't working for me. Uh, Alberto, man, uh, if you work nine to six, that means that you have uh, roughly two to three hours that you could be cold calling. Um, and an hour is perfectly fine. Dial for an hour. Just dial smarter, right? Up your dialer. Get in contact with more people. Um, niche in on it. If you got an hour, then use an hour. Figure out how long it takes to get a deal with an hour. Allocate the time and, and do it. You also have the weekends. You probably don't work. You have, I'm sure you don't work seven days a week. Um, so, you know, just uh, you could totally do it. You know, if you work full time, nine to six, I worked full time uh, 12 to 16 hours a day. I also traveled 50% of the year um, in my job and at work. Uh, I could not have my phone on me uh, in a, it was a secure environment. Uh, so, it's possible. Uh, you could hire a caller if you have the money for it. You just got to kind of figure out if that is, um, you know, right for you. But uh, um, at the end of this, I'll also mention something I got going on that, that'll help kind of give you some more clarity on that. Uh, where do you get your best data from? Uh, Chad, I use a combination of list source, prop stream, and my county. That's all I really do. Um, let's see. I'm just starting in wholesaling. If it's better to have a niche in wholesaling or attack all aspects of my first deal, uh, Suzanne or Susanna, uh, maybe how I say that, uh, Miss Flores. Um, then, if if you're if you're just starting off, you you can niche in. But you, what you want to do is you want to just understand what you're actually doing as far as like what type of data you got to understand really the underlying vexation that's there. Um, but if you're it really just depends on a lot of different things. It depends on time. It depends on uh, how much money you have to kind of invest in the business and a bunch of other stuff. The biggest thing is that you just don't lose your mind trying to do other things. Awesome. We broke 30, so we can, we can start getting going here. Um, but yeah, you, you'll learn more here because we're literally going to go through that, you know, to start marketing. Like I'm literally going to start a marketing campaign. Um, but budget is a big piece of that. But we're gonna, we, we actually cover that in the automated lead gen challenge or auto lead gen challenge. I'll share a link then. If, if it makes sense for some of you guys to join that challenge, then I, I highly encourage it. Um, how do you search public records for buyers? Um, public records for buyers, uh, there's, there's a hack for that if you're on other wholesalers list. But um, otherwise, you really don't. You could search what was sold and you could search owners that own properties and LLCs and then try and you know, manipulate. But that's highly dependent on what, um, what your county allows you to do. Cause not all counties are the same. So I can't really answer that, you know, perfectly for you, uh, manly. All right. We got a few more here and then we'll get started. How many people do you need to start to have to start a campaign and what's your marketing cycle for contacting them? Uh, Mr. Or Mrs. Anonymous attendee. Um, you, you only need yourself. I'm literally about to start a campaign right now. Um, and you know, if you're just getting started, then you don't really need too many cycles. However, uh, at REI SIP, we do teach all that in our onboarding, uh, free marketing course, as well as, uh, weekly masterminds and all that stuff. Um, in addition to that, um, you, I would say action first and then, um, you know, go further than that, but just don't, you know, just go aimlessly spending money here, 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 and here, because you're not going to end up having any results and then you're going to get burnt out. Uh, what, what lichness are you using? Uh, dude, everything. Uh, I use everything under the sun. 
Um, what is a good beginner budget sort of minimum dollar amount? Uh, I would say $500 a month is a very good, uh, budget. Um, however, you could do it with literally nothing. Um, if you don't have money, you compensate with effort, right? You compensate with hustle. Uh, that's pretty much the only answer because, because what is time equivalent to money, right? That's not a false thing. Time is equal to money. So if you don't have money, you, you need to dedicate more time. And really if, if you say, well, I don't have time, I call bullshit. Uh, you do have time. Uh, you need to just break down what you're doing in your day. We actually, I don't mean to keep mentioning auto, the auto lead gen challenge, but that's the second day is really breaking down your day and showing you that you do have time. Um, but what should you be focusing that time on is the biggest problem that people have. People have tons of time. The problem is that once you start watching, you know, instructional content, even maybe now some of you guys might have your phones out looking at Facebook. That's people's problem. Okay. So is there any reason you don't try to get prospects from title company? Are they not an accurate? Uh, what do you mean prospects from the title company? Uh, you mean like get the data from them? A lot of title companies do have um, data, but uh, like that's more for a transactional basis. Um, most title companies, like a lot of, a lot of title companies obviously have direct connections into a lot of other things. So I think that's a really good tactic. I think that's a, um, a really niche one, uh, Craigton, but in the end, uh, a lot of people aren't going to be able to build those connections right away. So the reason why we get the prospects from these locations is because it's, it's bulk, it's cheap. Um, and it works out, but that's where a lot of places do get their data from, uh, like the big companies, they link in with all the title companies, all the attorneys, everybody, and they try to aggregate data. Happy to see what REI ISIF has to offer to improve what I'm doing now. For sure, Ricky, dude. Um, I'm excited to show it. We're not going to really be digging into a whole bunch of REI ISIF stuff right now. Uh, you know, it's going to be a piece, obviously, of our puzzle here. Um, you guys are going to see why it's important to do what REI ISIF does um, because uh, it's, it is important. However, that's not the main concept here. What is the best method, mes method to find the owner of an LLC? Uh, Charlie, I actually have a video on that on my YouTube that I posted. Um, not too long ago, if you go to my YouTube channel and look for the yellow, it's like a yellow um, card, but it, it shows that whole process of how to find uh, LLC owners. Uh, it's really, really detailed. Uh, some people might find it boring, but I mean, I go into the granular and I go, it's like a real exact scenario. I grab a record from REI SIFT and I dig into it just like my VAs do. Um, okay, we answered all those. What is the best message to find owner of LLC? I already did that one. I heard some people are pulling probates uh, and other niche data from them. Yep, they are, uh, Craigton, for sure. Should I hire a VA for both texting and cold calling or should I start um, with the cold call first and have nine to five? Uh, if you want to do both texting and cold calling, if you don't understand your cold calling metrics to the T, you shouldn't be starting the text right now. Um, however, uh, if you only have one cold caller, I would have them you know, text from like you know, nine to 11 and then call for like three hours and then text more do some follow-up. Uh, it's just about putting a schedule to that. Um, no problem. You don't need multiple uh, callers to accomplish it. Hillsborough County. What's up, Alberto? You're in Hillsborough. That's my, that's my, that's my shit right there. Um, I'm in Hillsborough County, but targeting all major counties in Florida. Um, my first deal came from Ocala. I, I'm from just below Ocala. I'm, you know, Ocala used to be like the the city we would go to to actually do some things because <laughs> I, I grew up in a Bodunk town. Um, all virtually love it. Uh, should I dive deeper in the, yeah, you should dive deeper into Ocala and push up to Gainesville. Ocala and Gainesville are great markets right now. So definitely do that. All right. And, uh, and, and if you want to do some business together, let me know. All right. All right, cool. That's a bunch of questions, a bunch of stuff there. We got 32 people in here. Let's check the chat. I got to run, but I'll check, uh, out the replay. All good, Miguel, man. You already get all this shit all the time, man. You're RSF user. You're in every single weekly mastermind. You're good to go, bro. All right, Garrett's in here. Let's go. Um, Alberto, you already answered that. Okay, good. We're all set. So the next thing is figuring out who's going to be the person to win, right? So um, I got to think of the best way to do this, but I think the best way is going to be the fact now, okay, so we're going to have to call some audibles um, in case some people win because I know some people in here don't necessarily need this. Um, and some people already have marketing campaigns in place. So the way that we're going to have to work this is it's going to have to be whoever wins. We're going to have to do something around that. Like we're going to have to understand their situation a little bit. We're going to bring them on live. I'm going to give them access to talk. We're going to talk back and forth and figure out what they're doing. That way we can make sure that we put this in the right direction. Okay. 
because what I don't want to do is buy data out of my own pocket that ends up being data they already have. Um, if they already have data, we'll just leverage the data they have, but we'll still show how to pull it. Okay. That way we still get the value from that. Um, cause just keep in mind, I mean, this isn't something that anybody like does, you know what I mean? So, uh, we have to, uh, you know, do the best we can and making sure that it's taken care of here. So, um, let's just do this. Let's, let's go to like a Google calculator. We got 33 people in here right now. I'm just going to do from one to 33 and it's going to give us a number and that number is who wins. Does everyone agree that that's fair? Put it in the chat for me. Say, Hey, yeah, that's fair. Alberto fair. Tony says, cool. What else we got? Fair enough. Yeah. One more time. I had to step away. No, Chad, you don't step away. You don't have to step away. No, everyone say everyone else. Every majority already rolls, Chad. But now we're just going to do a, a, a round. We're, there's, we're just going to take however many number of people in here. We're, gonna, we're sharing a screen here for the, um, the chat and um, go from there. Andy, I don't know what 45 means. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right, cool. So let's, um, let's go ahead and just open up uh, Google Calculator uh, or Google Random Generator. A random number generator. Google, I believe, has one. Here we go. One until how many people we got in here right now? 33. Oh, see what the chat says. I have a lot of chat. Okay. What's up, Kimberly? Um, so one until 33. And generate. 24. Okay. So let's count who's, who's the 24th person in the list of attendees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Uh, 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Manly Hines. Manly, did, aren't, I think you've, 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 come, you've been on my lives before, and I think that you've, uh, Garrett's like, that's my name, Manly Hines. What's up, dude? All right. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember if, um, Manly, I know I've seen your name so much recently. I might be mistaken, but are you already an REI ISIF user? I can't remember. No, you're not. Okay, perfect. So this will work out even better, but I know you've been in my chats and stuff, so I do appreciate that. Um, so let's go ahead and let's bring you on live here and let's kind of figure out what you got going on so that we can build out the best thing we can here uh, for you. And um, da -da -da -da. wait, so caveat again this is a caveat uh manly uh and we'll we'll talk about this when you're live but remember the thing is that when i go through this you're making a commitment not only to to continuing on with the campaign um because depending on what market you're in uh i might have if, if not i'm not going to waste the money i'm going to continue on in that campaign so you have to be ready and obligated to commit uh to i don't know if you're already doing deals or not or, or marketing or what but um, remember this is for you to commit. So if you're not ready to commit, you're not ready to continue on and you don't have a budget, um, then I'm not going to set all this shit up because that's kind of a waste of time. You good? All right. So we're going to, um, we're going to bring you on. Let me figure out how I bring, how I, I allow you to talk and, um, manly Hans, a lot of talk. All right, dude, you're, you're able to talk. Um, go ahead and, and let's run through stuff. How you doing, man? You got to unmute yourself though. If you can even talk right now. Hey, what's up, bro? What's up, dude? Not much. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Hey, for sure, dude. For sure. We're going to get you rock and roll. I'm going to put you in the best, um, kind of start off. Obviously I'm not, um, I can't get everything for your market, but I'm going to do it how I would do it entering into a new market. So, um, what are you doing right now? And what market are you in? Um, right now, um, I, I'm, I'm in California right now. Uh, I was living in Miami, but uh, I had to go back to California, but I'm still trying to virtual in Miami right now. Great. It's like horse shit. It's rigged. Uh, you're, you're, so where are you, you're in Cali right now, but where are you, where do you want to market at? Are you, are you wanting to market in Cali? No, no, uh, my, Miami. You want to do Miami. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cause I was gonna say Cali, do you know what? This is, this is actually going to be dope because Miami, we can get the tax list right from, um, from their county records. Um, so that'll help out a lot. Um, and then we can just get like free and clear out of there, but we want to focus, especially in Miami. We want to, we want to focus on 
um, the top zip codes because Miami is massive, right? Yeah. So um, do you have any data right now at all that you're currently marketing to or any data um, from list source, anything at all? Uh, no, well, I haven't pulled any data because I'm, I just started Lead Pro yesterday. So I'm digging through that and I, I pulled some names, like some vacant ones, that vacant lists for Miami, but uh, yeah, that's, that's all the marketing I have right now. Just gonna, uh, okay. What's lead, what's lead pro lead pro. I, I just found out about it yesterday. It's pretty much prop stream. And um, I was watching wholesale hotline with Jamil and them and some guy from South Africa mentioned it and he got like huh. a deal off of it. So I just signed up for it like a two week free trial. Damn, dude, I need to start showing all the deals that people make in REI if people sign up like that. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, what's up, Omar? What's up, dude? What's up, Dev? Um, no, just kidding. Uh, all right, cool. So, all right, well, that's great. So we get to go from the beginning on this then. We're going to do a little bit of buyer analysis first, guys and gals. Um, that way we can understand where we need to be at. And then we're going to go into, God, this is like, man, this is, this is going to be awesome. I'm so excited. Okay, so... Well, we're going to start off, you know, just so that I can have some, um, no mix available iPhone challenges. Uh, um, all right. So what I'm going to do first is actually, I'm going to share my iPad screen here and I need to, I need to put my thoughts on something. And I, I highly recommend you guys do this too when you're starting to do anything because I have a notepad here in front of me that I was going to do it on, but I realized you guys can't see that because you guys aren't, you know, robots and I don't know, hopefully don't have cameras in my house. Um, so let me go ahead and, and share my iPad screen and I'm going to put down my thoughts, uh, kind of what I got going on here because, uh, it's a lot of random things that can go on here, uh, in order to get this rock and roll. And so let's, let me clear out some stuff. Let's get this going. Do you have, uh, like an hour here? Uh, is it manly or is it man? How do you pronounce no, it? It's, it's manly. Yeah. I got all the time okay. in the world, brother. All right, cool. Let's, let's, uh, let's get this going. All right, so let me share my, stop sharing my computer and we're gonna start sharing my iPad. All right. What do you do now, work-wise? Oh, work-wise, uh, I'm in the entertainment industry. So, you know, doing production system behind the camera. So that completely shut down. COVID yeah. stuff. I don't right. think it's going to come back this year just because people don't want to take the risk. The insurance companies, if somebody gets sick on set, and, you know, that's a lawsuit. Right. So I think it's going to be. So are you like a Adobe or a Premiere type kind of guy or what do you do? Uh, I, I do. Pre I really want to try to be a cinematographer that that's in my range, but I shoot like videos and I work with Adobe Premiere pretty much. Okay. So you do video editing everything? Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. You and I need to talk after this then. All right. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, all right, cool. So, um, let's, um, let me see, check on what's going on with chat real quick before I get into this. Uh, no microphone. I can log in on iPad. You're good, Omar. Do your, do your thing, man. Do whatever you got going on. All right, cool. So, um, what are we going to cover right now? I, I pull this out. This is something I do anytime I'm going to be covering anything anymore. I, I built these sheets to have some structure around it. The more structure you have, the, the better you can, you know, use it. And it also allows me to share this um, PDF document. So right now we're going to cover like, uh, you know, start to finish. Uh, uh, let's see, prospects to leads. Um, I think is what I named this. And I just want to write down some of my thoughts on my steps that I need to do to get here. So uh, number one, what market, which we already know, um, which is Miami. Was that Dade? Yeah, Dade County, Miami-Dade County. Dade, so we're going to highlight that. All right, number two, we have, uh, if we know what market, we got to know what zips after that. So put a box here. Um, number three, we need to know after we have the zips, we have to pull data. And number four, after we know that, we have to clean data. And 
And that's going to be an REI sift. Five is going to be um, decide campaigns. That's also going to be an REI sift. Um, this is also like data analysis. Uh, six is going to be um, export. Um, slash send. Uh, oops, no, we missed one. See, this is why I write it down. Uh, six is going to be skip trace. Uh, seven is going to be export slash send. Eight is going to be uh, start campaigns. And then nine is going to be uh, respond. And then 10 is going to be close deals. Um, so let me, let me just kind of run through the different things. Does everybody see, uh, let me go out a bit. Everyone see the 10 steps here to creating this camp to, to getting good, rocking and rolling. This is literally like the 10 steps to entering into a market. I did, I didn't yeah, like great. plan these. This is just like, you know, what I would do. And I guess now what's cool about writing stuff down like this is now I could send this to my designer and say, Hey, create like a, a resource for the 10 steps, you know? So it's kind of cool. Uh, it's one of the nice things about it. Uh, doing it this way, um, makes sense. So, okay. Kim Kimberly says, yes. Danny says, yes. Um, everybody I'm sure says yes. Fantastic. Appreciate that. Lisa. Awesome. Okay, cool. So this is the 10 steps to starting a campaign. We got to know where we're going, what zip codes, we got to pull the data. Um, but let's cover kind of some of these where, where some of this could happen at. So pulling the data, this could be a uh, list source. I'm not going to go, I have a lot of other education that I do when it comes to like why list source, why prop stream, when you should do what, when you should do that, this, that, and the other, we're going to kind of cover it and glimpse over it, but I'm not going to go in, into granular detail. However, um, if you want to know like where and what data to pull and like in, and where to focus and niche in on, if you go to reisif.com or IO, hover over the resources tab and then click on the motivated seller focuser. That's a document that you'll receive that um, goes through all of that. And if you're going to do that, also watch the webinars under webinars. There's one that says, are you generating hot leads? It's a pre-recorded webinar. Watch over that. I cover my 3V motivated seller focus uh, or framework. And it kind of covers like the three Vs of motivation, value, vexation, viability. And it breaks all that down. So it's really a good resource. Um, your volume just went way down on our end, Kimberly said. Can everyone else hear me okay? Yep, I can hear you fine. You, Gary can hear me. Sounds good. Yes. Kimberly, it's you. I'm sorry. All right, cool. Um, all right, yeah, everyone go check that out. I promise you the webinar is dope. It's long. Garrett's in it. <laughs> Garrett's trolling me in it. Uh, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a good one. I love it. Um, oh, okay, sorry, Kimberly. My bad. Um, all right, cool. So let's press on. Um, so, so check that out. But list sources one, prop stream. And I'm only going to tell you guys stuff that I use in my business. I'm not going to mention anything else because there's no point. PropStream, I only just started using really this year. Um, but a lot of users are using it and getting success. You just got to use it in the right way. Um, like don't pull vacancy data from there necessarily until you've pulled everything else that you can. That's fixation. If you have extra leads every single month that you can pull, go ahead and pull some uh, vacant data. However, um, I'll explain a little bit why it, you don't want to. Uh, just rely on it because when you upload it to REI SIF, there's, you're going to create some false positives because um, REI SIF checks for vacancy. So I would rather you get more high equity data, more vexation data and upload that because REI SIF is going to check it for vacancy anyway. So like, don't waste the time uploading a vacant list for REI SIF just to check whether it's truly vacant or not. The positive still, of still pulling it is just because it's no longer vacant doesn't mean that a vexation doesn't exist because it was vacant for a reason. So they still might want to sell it. So um, 
So it's still good to have. It's just not the priority to pull um, in, in the whole grand scheme of things. So list source, prop stream, and then county are the only places I pull data from. Um, there is some more uh, if you have higher budgets, like if you're going to want to start getting um, like probate and pre-probate and stuff like that, you could utilize, um, you know, some stuff there. What's up, baby? Yeah, go ahead and get it from mommy. I'm in a webinar, okay? All right, thanks, honey. All right, so go ahead. She will. Um, so after that, cleaning data in REI SIFT. Um, anytime that you get data from anywhere, period, do not, do not, do not, do not send it for skip tracing. Do not send mail to it. Do not do anything to it until you clean the data up first. Um, and, to, and, and the benefit is you can do this manually. It sucks. Trust me. I done it. For, I did it for two years. Um, paid a VA to do it. Cost me about on average $500 a month to have my data cleaned. Um, but I promise you it will, um, especially like once it's really for like three months, it's 500 after that. It's just a maintenance thing. Um, as you bring in more data, but the benefit is if you have systems in place to pull like your evictions list and some of these other niche lists that you, you will end up pulling over time. Um, the process of pulling it, already makes it clean right so she's she's so you can then upload that with no problem but the biggest reason why uh, you want to use a system for it is because it can automate some of that process like if it's missing a zip code rather than you have to search for a zip code a system like rei SIF will run it through the usps and will actually append the zip code for you um all about you know stuff like that right so the other benefit is is it's going against a normalized database the usps because places like list source and places like PropStream, when they're, when they're getting their data, they're getting it from sort, like data sources that are getting it from another data source. And in the end, it all leads back to being like someone who physically imported data somewhere. And the USPS is the central in the United States, the central place that says, I don't care about anybody else's mailing address or anybody else's addresses, period. This is what we believe in. And it, you want to be able to check your data all against that central database because when you do skip tracing, that's what, you know, you're going to get the highest results from. If you do direct mail, which I highly recommend you do in the right way, um, it's going to end up, you know, making sure that it has the highest likelihood that you get it to that person because it's having that address. Um, and it just bolsters everything. It makes it to where it takes care of a lot of le leaky faucets to where you're not having money drip away that you can't see. You know, it's really easy to say, oh yeah, I just pull my list and I'm just going to go ahead and trace it. And I'm just going to go ahead and send it direct mail. But, um, and you could do that and you can track the KPI, but if you have a solid foundation to grow up to that point, um, then you're going to have a lot of success um, with being able to expand out your business while still maintaining a really high profitability. Um, so, uh, so that's that deciding what campaigns we're going to cover that live skip tracing um, REI SIFT is where we're going to do that from. Uh, we can skip trace right in there. You can skip trace in a lot of other places. Um, we cover uh, in like our masterminds and stuff, a three-step skip tracing. Um, and really what that means is just, uh, it's all part of the cycling funnel. If you haven't reached somebody over like 90 days, it's probably because you need a different phone number or something else like that. Um, and and just, just understand that it's not about like, oh, well, this skip tracing is better than this skip trace. That's all fucking fad. That's what that is. Like marketing and data is um, a place where people can just go out and they can create this best product and whoever has the best marketing is the one that wins, right? To say that my product is better than that other product. Um, what you need to do is remove all the noise, just choose a place to skip trace from and just do it and just ma maintain consistency with it until you get a good baseline KPI with it. Um, because it doesn't matter how good the data is or how bad the data is, you're going to get a deal at a certain point, but do not just get skip tracing and then use it for like three or four numbers inside of it and then think that it's bad skip tracing and then you stop. Continue through, recycle the campaigns, figure out how much it takes to get a deal from that. Because if it's only three cents versus, you know, 25 cents, then if it takes three times the, the time to get a deal from the three cents than the one for 25 cents, then that's still cheaper, right? It's all a basis of time and KPI. It's not a basis of how much I've spent. It's not a basis of any of that shit. It's how much time does it take to produce revenue into my business? And once you understand that, and until you understand that, you literally don't understand anything. Uh, so make sure that you understand that metric before you start deciding if something's better or worse than another. On top of that, 
if you skip trace through something and then, and then you don't get phone numbers back from it, make sure you understand if the things you didn't get phone numbers back from, there's generally a reason why. And generally it's because nobody else is getting results. And if someone other place gets results for it, it could be because they just have that data location. Um, so just make sure that you have a good, a good understanding. Um, so I, in my business, naturally I use REI SIF first because all my data is in REI SIF to, to prospect to, right? The prospect management system, everything's already in there. I skip trace there first. After a period of time, I then remove, uh, if I don't get contacts in, in call tools and SMS and stuff like that, it gets re skip trace elsewhere because I already skip trace in REI SIF. Now, depending on the timeline, maybe I'll go and I'll, um, I'll recreate, um, and, and re-skip trace it internally just to see if I get results. Because if I don't, then it's not money spent or wasted because if we don't get results, then guess what? We don't pay for it anyway. So, um, so you just got to understand that. So, um, yeah, that's all I'm really going to cover on that because I could go on forever and because it's not scripted or staged, I'd have a lot of ums and alls. And as I process my thoughts on what I want to tell you guys to best not, give you guys, you know, strings to just pull on and, and, and run with without any guidance. Um, so yeah, skip trace there. I, we then export that or internally in REI SIF, you, we're adding integration. So you might just not export it. You might just inside of REI SIF, send it, send it straight into a call tools campaign, which will be done here, uh, hopefully tonight. Um, I actually tested it today. I'll show you guys in call tools. Um, and then you start your campaign, you know, and how you start your campaign depends on where you sent it. Maybe you're doing direct mail. Maybe you're doing call, cold calling. Maybe you're doing SMS, whatever. Here in this situation, we're going to do SMS because we're going to get a direct response right away. Um, and that's what I'm looking for. Um, and it really helps out since, you know, you want to market in Miami because, you know, I got people that would close deals down in there. Um, nice. So um, start campaigns and then um, respond. So responding to campaigns is... The next big thing, right? That's that's after you start getting uh, prospects that are answering you, you got to respond in a certain fashion, and you got to close the deals. And and the way you guys found us, and the reason I'm even doing this right now is for my, my buddy Quentin Flores. You know they're doing the closer Olympics. So if you want to learn and you want to understand how to close deals, the best way to do it is to to practice yourself. Number one, that's the number one best way. And the number two best way is to see that shit live. And that's what's going to be happening in the closer Olympics. So definitely for the price, you cannot at all ask for, you know, good, better content. So definitely, uh, highly recommend, you know, going and, and, and joining that even for the replays. I mean, you like literally, if you think about it, you're going to end up spending more on lunch for the next three days than you will for probably the closer Olympics. And I only eat once a day. That's like my, my, how I eat, you know, I don't eat until like probably four to seven o'clock at night. I eat once and then that's pretty much it. Um, and then I fill everything else in with beer. It's really a great. I mean, it's fantastic. If you try that, man, I'm just kidding. It's not always beer. Sometimes it's whiskey. Um, it's mostly whiskey. Uh, <laughs> Gary's like, it's true. Yeah, he knows. So, um, so yeah, I mean, think about that next time. I like, think about, see the beautiful thing about education, even you guys being here now, let's see if we had anybody drop off yet. We had one, um, even now, like, the education you're learning now, you might not be ready for it. So you can't even put, I mean, this is free, so you can't put a dollar value on it anyway. Like, it's not like you're wasting anything. Um, but, you know, you, even reading a book, right? If you read a book, uh, you might not be ready for all the knowledge in the book. So you can't put like a value on your time for reading that book because it might be three years. It might be five years until you think back on that book where you realize that you've now just benefited from the education you're going to have some immediate stuff but education is a long-term com commitment it's a it's it's one of those things where i mean it truly is one of the biggest blessings that we have as a, a species is to be able to regurgitate information and it be something that benefits us for the rest of our lives right anything that we do you know from me lifting up my arm to me staring at the camera when i talk everything is value-based and in, in it's it, hold on that was important i think Um, you know, so, so just take, take, think about that. All right. So that's the 10 steps. So now that we have the 10 steps, let's go ahead and let me look at the Q and A. When you say clean data is just deleting other information you don't need. No, uh, Ricky, when I say clean data, I mean, um, addresses that don't have zip codes, addresses that don't have a first name, addresses that aren't address normalized addresses that, you know, might be missing an, a mailing address and only having a property address. 
You know, I ran into some, um, a couple yesterday uh, or an investor, not a couple, two partners, I think they were. And I don't know if you guys are in here, but, you know, they were only basing everything off of mailing addresses. I mean, that's a huge, a huge no-no. You know, um, even skip tracing, what if there's no mailing address? What are you going to do? I mean, there's, you know, you got to really um, have complete mailing addresses and property addresses to have full insight on how to get a hold of a property owner. Um, if they're owner occupied, that makes it really simple. You just copy a mailing address and then you just copy it twice and you have a mailing address and a, and a property address. The problem is that people think when you think of absentee um, or you think of vacancy, people think that nobody lives there, but, or like you could have a mailing address that's vacant. It's because it like a probate situation, for example, someone passed away, no one lives in the property and the, it's the same mailing address as the property address because it's owner occupied. Um, and it's vacant, you know, that's a, a typical scenario that happens all the time. Um, but people don't focus on owner occupied. Well, owner occupied get are vacant too. So, um, why not? But people think vacant as they don't live in the property, meaning they don't, it's just, it's, you just got to understand really the underlying stuff. And, and, and a lot of people don't because of the fact that, uh, it's, it's just not normal to, to, with the low barrier to entry into, into, a a a business model, uh, it's really easy to not actually treat it like a real business. Okay. And you need to. Um, all right. So that's the 10 things. I'm gonna leave that on my left-hand side here so that I make sure I knock out all 10 of these steps here. Let's start off with um, step two, what zip codes. So let me go ahead and share my screen and we're going to hop into list source. I did a video on YouTube. If I go to my YouTube channel here, um, let me see which one it is. I believe it's this one, how to pull list source buyers list. Um, I'm going to do the same exact thing, except for I'm going to analyze some stuff. So if you guys don't have my YouTube channel, there it is. Um, you guys can check it out and, and get some value from that. Let's see, did I get a comment or comment. Is awesome? Nope. Okay. Um, so let me go ahead and hop over to list source. Let me log in. And we're going to start this from scratch. Uh, what? Um, why can't I log in? Yeah, it's recorded. All right, let me see here. Um, I don't know why I can't log in. Let me go ahead and um, stop recording real quick so I can go in my email and see, I don't know, maybe my password's jacked up, but I don't know why it would be. Um, let me. Let me search for this real quick. Gosh, I have a lot of emails. Oh, we have a closing today, apparently. That's cool. Hmm. Okay. Um, Hold with me, y'all. I got to find um, my password. I don't know why I wouldn't be able to log in since it's literally in it yesterday, but.
Where in the mother liquor is this email? All right, here we go. Let me try to log in real quick with this. What the hell? What the hell? Huh. That will be a big bugger. Um, it's not a deal breaker. We'll just use prop stream otherwise, but it really kind of sucks. I don't know why. It's saying invalid username or password, but I mean, that's it. I wonder if... Um, what do you mean? I just need to get, I need to buy the data. That's, that's, I'm actually going to be buying the data for it. So that's why I needed that. Huh. Um, let me open up like an incognito mode and see if maybe. Y'all hold on once. Oh, okay. No, didn't let me in. Okay. I'm just going to have to use prop stream y'all. Um, I don't know if maybe it's because I have three cents list source. So I'll, I'll have to see if maybe it's because of the master account. Something's jacked up with the master account. Um, that's probably maybe what it is, but I'm not going to buy the data at not three cents. Um, I don't think so. Man, Manly, you don't have a list source account already, do you? And you're muted by the way. Yeah, I have a, a list source account. Is it at three cents? Uh, no. Uh, I was trying to ask to see if I can get it because Max Maxwell had a special, but that was like last year. So. I think yeah, I'll that's yellow. It. It's through yellow, yellow letter HQ. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the problem is it takes 20, like 24 hours for them or their account to set up. So we're not going to, I guess we're not going to work on that right now. We're just going to use everything through prop stream. Okay, um, that's cool. And uh, we'll just rock with that. Let me make sure. Let's see. Hopefully. Dang, what really sucks though is that like that's our that's how we um we're gonna look up if it's what zip codes we wanted. Uh um well I guess we could utilize we could, we don't need that account to do that. Um let me just Let me just try this. Let me try a forgot password real quick and see what happens then. Let's see if that... Um If that does anything. Yeah, I know, Tony. Me too.
Hey, Tyler, so you're, you're just in the Florida market, that's it? You don't virtually in other states, or you're just in Florida? Just in Florida. Okay. Well, we do some Alabama. Man, this is so lame. Here we go. Password retrieval. Yeah, look at that. I think that is a different password. Let me try now. It looks different. Mm. Oh. But it still says invalid user ID or password. How? I literally, you just, you literally just sent me an email with my password, which means that it exists. Okay, this is gonna make me want to strangle the source. Um, let me try and type everything 100% manually. So this Google autocorrect BS. New incognito mode, listsource.com, my email. I'm gonna take the email right from in here. I'm even put it in all, all caps like they have it. And the password. Okay, we're in. I, I have no fucking idea why in the, the hell that did that. Well, we have it now, so let's let's rock with it. Uh, it's fucking weird. Okay, share. Let me check who just texted me. Okay. Share screen. All right, y'all. Someone just posted having technical... Oh, did they? Yeah, so that's probably what it was. Um, they must have done something to where... Uh, I don't know, but we're here now. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start off. We're just going to create a custom, create your own, and we're going to do a buyer's. So we're going to click create your own. And let me timestamp this. So how, how long does, does anyone know or can see how long we've been um, on here so far? We'll just start at one. So it's roughly been an hour. Um, so we're going to put a timestamp, hold data. We're going to put like one hour so that we can kind of put people kind of close. Um, 53 minutes. Okay. So All right, cool. Appreciate that guys. All right. So we're going to start this out. So we're going to do, um, geography first and we're going to do it by County. And then we're going to go Florida and we're searching for Dade add. So you can see your counts at 670,000 records there. And now we're going to go um, over to mortgage and we're going to say, um, I'm sorry, property. And then we're going to say percentage equity percent. And we're going to say a hundred to a hundred. Okay. So we want hundred percent equity and we're going to click add. And then we're going to go, um, and we're going to narrow down by property type. So that's under property and then property type. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose only the, oh, that's parking type. That's not what we want. That's property. Property type. No, it's parking again. Son of a property. There we go. All right. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do the preset selections for the single family residences. Okay. That's all we really care about right now. And then click add. So it's townhouses, condominiums, and so on. Um, I don't really like to mix multifamily in with my regular list. So now we're down to 93,000 that I have 100% equity. But now we need that to be within a certain time frame. Okay, so we're going to do last market sale date. And we're going to do 12 months and then click add. All right, so it's going to bring us down to 5,421. Now, there's a few things I want to cover in this topic. First of all, um, oh, and we also want options for our buyers list. We want to say absentee. We don't want owner occupied. It doesn't matter if they're in state or out of state and there are no preferences on corporate owned. 
and then no preferences on address completion. So it's no preference, no preference, no pre preference, absentee. All right, so now it's like 6,000, right? But there's really important things I wanna cover on this. We said 100 to 100% equity. Can anybody um, in the chat let me know what else is the, what's the problem when we actually buy the buyer's list? What is the problem with only adding only equity? Any, is there any, I don't know if there's any REISF users in here that can answer this question or anybody who's just knows. There's a really, really big problem that that's going to include. And it, it all boils down to understanding what the difference between a, a, what, what sales are. Like you have to understand deeds a little bit and how deeds are transferred. And this is like high level, uh, like mastermind kind of data pulling kind of stuff here. So it also deals with the fact that when some people buy buyer's list and they're calling it, um, they get people that say, I'm not an investor. Well, remember, this is a buyer's list. Wayland's in the right direction. Inheritance versus cash buyers. So he, his, his brain went the right direction there. Their problem is that this is going to include deed transfers that just transferred um, without any money attached, right? It could have just been a probate finished and the deed transferred from one owner to another. We call that arms, arms length transfers. Okay. So we want to try to eliminate those. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to add a last market sales price and we're going to go from like a thousand or more. We just need it to be, or really a hundred or more dollars because most deeds are like 101. So from 101 up to you know, whatever, you know, price range, but you have to have a price range. So we're just going to say like 50 million or something like that. I don't know, just anything, something ridiculous. Notice how I knocked off like a thousand. So now we, now we only have 5,700. So that's going to remove those. So out of curiosity, what if we just go ahead and remove that? and add in a thousand or more. We'll do like 500 million again. Just about the same, right? So we know that we have roughly, you know, um, if not exactly the same, we have roughly a thousand arm length transfers. So if I tell you that, what do you think you could actually buy now? What kind of list could you buy in list source outside of what everybody else ever buys? And the fact that like you guys are in here means that you kind of deserve this kind of knowledge. So, um, you know, you have about a thousand arm's length transfers there. So what if there are arm's length transfer and it was an out of state, right? I mean, someone could have been inherited a property or received a probate property or something else that is an out of state owner um, that now has a property they don't want, right? So it's a whole nother type of list. That's huge, okay? So um, definitely look into that in your market. Okay, so this is, this is now the buy criteria that we normally buy a buyer's list from. So what we're going to do is I'm going to save this criteria as Dade. Dade buyers. Okay, I'm going to click save. And what we're going to do now is we're going to actually go ahead and go say purchase list. And I am going to go to uh, purchase a partial list. And I'm going to go custom selection and I'm going to say zip code. And then what I'm going to do is look at the zip codes here. I'm going to export them. And I'm actually going to send these just to my REI SIFT email so I can easily find it and click submit. All right. Close that out. Let me go to my other. Um, if you guys haven't listened to the new Will remix, this is fucking amazing. So check it out. Uh, okay. That was a good tip you gave, Tyler. Thanks for that. The of arm flames transfer. Yeah, it's huge, man. And I like the uh, Will song, too, by Joyner Lucas. I saw the video, too. It's dope. The Will or the remix? Uh, I saw the – I heard the remix, and I saw the video, the original one. It's pretty dope. Yeah, ver yeah, the original one's dope. The remix is fucking amazing. He just dropped some gold right there. If you didn't just catch that. He gave a probate list tip. Yeah, for sure, Alberto, for sure. Um, probate, uh, tons of stuff. Man, we lost four people. How we just gave out like a major gem and then four people leave. It's fucking hilarious. 
Okay. Uh, let's go to my Gmail. And then go to Okay, we're gonna download this. Then we're just gonna go into my drive real quick. I don't know who from Fort Myers is calling me, but we're gonna have to, uh, let's just create a new folder here and just call this giveaway. Go into it and then drop this in here. Open it up as a Google Sheet. I'm just gonna rename this uh, once we do that to hot zip codes. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to go ahead and just sort this select top left corner here, add that. And then we're going to go Z to a, what that's going to do is going to show us the highest zip codes first and the lowest last. And we're going to notice that obviously our top two zip codes are, are quite a bit higher than the, the rest. So what I do a lot of times is I look at the median, right? So I'll add all these up. Just so you guys know how I generally do this, I, you know, if I wasn't just buying top zip codes. So we'll add them all up, which is 5,000, which is at the very top. I just wanted to be able to have a, a, a number against it. So that's the, the total. Um, but what we're going to do then is take that and we're going to create a, another expression here. So it's 84. So that's, how many is that total? That's so 77. So we're going to take that and we're going to create equals and then boom, divided by uh, 77. Yeah. So our immediate, so our average is 74 houses throughout the year. Okay. Um, so anything that's above 74, so from 30, this zip code up is generally like the data I would buy like for a seller, but you can see like some are like only a few off, but they still have a lot of sales. So, you know, those are still hot in that market, but what we're going to do now is we're going to pull one more. We're going to do one more because we want to really see what's going on in this, in this area. So we're going to go into our, um, list source here and we're going to go back. Go back again. And instead of doing, oh, son of a, save searches. And we're going to go back to the day buyers and we're going to adjust our timeline. So instead of it being last market sale date for the last 12, we're going to do the last six months. Because what we want to do is we want to compare zip codes real quick. Notice how there's a lot more in the, so that's 2,500. So there's more cash transactions in the last six months. Uh, or in, in the last six months, or there's less rather than the six months prior. So what we're going to do now is um, purchase this list, but we're not really going to purchase it. We're just going to go to partial list here and then custom, go to zip code. And then we're going to export these. I right, have these sent to us. Um, same thing, submit. All I did was add up all the um, zip codes and then um, I added up all the zip codes and then I just um, did the averages of them. That's it. I'm going to download this one, delete this one. I'm going to drag and drop this one in, open up this one. And all I'm going to do is adjust this um, right here. I'll delete all this stuff out. Don't really care about any of that. And I'm going to add, merge these columns here and say 12 months, 2020. What is our date right now? The February 22nd. And I'm going to put, or May 22nd, 05, 22, 2020. Okay. So we have that. Okay, and we're going to open up this one, and I'm literally just going to copy this row. I'm going to put it right next to it. All right, and I'm going to delete. I'm going to just copy this, 
basically here, and then six months. So all we're gonna do now, actually we need to add. All right, so now all we're gonna do is sort these ones now a to Z. Shit, hold on. Z to A. Then Z to A. Son of a. Okay, hold on. Gotta go back. We're fudging with it. In the wrong way here. Hold on. I'm not smart enough to do this in, a, in the way that I want to, so I'm just gonna put it in here, and then I'm gonna select everything. I'm gonna sort it here first. Okay, now I'm gonna copy it, and then I'm gonna put it in there. Okay. So uh, we're gonna look at the zip codes. The top three, did they stay consistent? Okay. So we're looking at the top three, did they stay consistent? Top four, I guess, apparently. Okay. So we have 3939, nine, so we know that that's good. And we know that it's actually went, uh, this is six months here. We know that in the last six months, it, it slowed down a little bit. Um, 122 for 160 compared to 310. You know, if we do that, you know, 310 uh, minus 122 is 188. So, I mean, it, it, there was a lot more in the previous six months than there is now. Um, 286 minus 91 is a huge difference. That's not consistent. Or, I'm sorry, it's actually 78. It's even lower. So 341, 33141 had a lot of sales in the beginning of or, or mid 2019 and not very much uh, at the end of 2019 leading into 2020. And there's a few reasons for that. Number one, um, we always have a lot more sales usually during throughout the summertime. So that could pick up, that could pick up coming into, um, you know, the, um, uh, uh, the summer, right? Obviously right now COVID could pay, play a part in that as well. So um, just be mindful of what's actually happening uh, in the market. But 33178 um, is actually 71 and compared to 220. But what we know for sure is 33139 uh, uh, is pretty balling. So what we're going to do is we're definitely going to check that out and see where actually that is at inside of my Miami Dade, which looks like the expensive area, Miami Beach, which is really interesting. Um, why that's happening, who really knows? But um, I'm guessing that's a lot of beach houses. I'm, I don't know what the median price range is there. So what I would like to do is go into Zillow and I'm just going to search that zip code and get an idea of what the houses are that sell in that zip code. Uh, oops. Okay. So really expensive, like $22 million houses, $40 million houses. So there might be something going on there that we can't see from the data perspective. Um, we'd have to dig in a lot more to that, but there's some here that are a lot cheaper inside. 220, 475, 220, 139. So let's go ahead and do sold and let's just do the last 90 days. Um, and then let's check like first time home buyer price range here in that area. Um, I would say probably 200,000 plus. Okay. So we still have a, a pretty good chunk. Uh, let me reduce that actually for the, 
up to, let's say 500,000. So there's still quite a bit. Um, definitely in the last 90 days, we still have a huge chunk. So I'm guessing condos are going to be a really huge thing in Miami. Um, apartments, townhouses. I don't, I'm not hundred percent you know, like in that market. So I don't know for sure, but it seems like it's a really active um, market. I'm sure this is an Airbnb sale, um, condos sold for cash. Uh, potentially who knows, um, uh, might've been a flip. We can see that. And by now going into prop stream right now, we're in data analysis, you know, time frame here. So, um, you guys keep sticking with me here. We're going to keep seeing what's going on with this zip code. Uh, we're going to take the same zip code. And now, um, cause prop stream already does a little, a lot of work for us when it comes to some of these lists, we're going to do that zip code. And then we're just going to search, um, just do a real quick filter. It's not the same filters I would normally do, but we're just going to do the flippers um, one here. I have custom filters for it. And we're going to see if there's buy, buy and sells here. We can see um, quite a few estimated value, 179 details on it. Um, Space Coast Credit Union. So you're, that's a bank. So we don't want to really use that as an example. Some details on this one. Okay. So here's a holdings company. So this looks like it was a flip potentially, or maybe they're just holding it as an Airbnb because this kind of looks like a hotel room, but I'm sure it's a condo. Um, so there's, they're, they're holding a condo there. Um, let's look at some of these ones that are more inland here. RC2 Florida LLC. Definitely a, um, looks like a flip little, little condo one here, condominium. So yeah, so definitely there's potential. There's, it's really active here uh, in this zip code. Um, and there's honestly, believe it or not, um, quite a bit. So this already sold. So let's look at MLS details and see what I would do is I would then take this and I would look to see who, who previously bought it because it's already sold. So, um, I would want to see what it looked like previously. Let's see. It's really retro. Check. Oh, dude, this place is nice. Yeah. So it looks like someone came in here and beaut beautified it. And then uh, I wonder what it looked like previously, but it was built in 1940s. There's a lot of heritage there. I really like that. Especially this back patio area. That's dope. Um, and the stairs. It's awesome. So a lot of opportunity down there. So it looks like that's a pretty good zip code. So what we're going to do then is now we're going to um, go back and we're going to see, cause now that we know there's activity, you know, we know that that's something pretty decent to be in. I'm sure these are all really expensive. I don't know why they must, they bought this. I put the price. Um, so this was bought and sold. That's great. That's fucking gorgeous. Oh my God. That is crazy. How's that only 1.7 million? That's ridiculous. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so we're good. So we're going to rock with that. So we're going to look at the zip codes now. Um, I want to check to see, 32160, um, still the next very, you know, pretty good consistent. Ideally, I'd rather be in a bit more of a first uh, single family residence community. So we're just going to kind of look at and see where this zip code's at and see if, um, okay, so that's still kind of the same area. Um, a little further north, it looks like maybe. Um, but still condos and stuff. Man, condos are ridiculous down in Miami, huh? Um, there's some, but I don't know. I would imagine like, I would want to be somewhere like in here. You know what I mean? Like, let's see about some of these other zip codes. Let's see. There's still quite a bit here. Still quite a bit here. Let's check out on one, four, one, even though it went down, it could be because it's a single family residence area. So let's peek at that real quick. See if we can't get into more. What? It just put me in the same exact fucking spot. The two zip codes in one area. Okay. It's weird. What about this one? Okay. So that, that's more inland. Now we're talking about how more houses and stuff. So I, I like that. This is more, this is more where I would feel more comfortable. 
um, for consistent businesses in here. Um, however, you could niche in really heavy on condos. So it looks like we're going to ideally want to be our top, our top four um, or five. So anything 70 in the last six makes sense probably. As our budget grows, I would end up being probably down here, anything 50 or higher probably. But um, we're going to focus on these top four zip codes right here. One, two, three, four, five. Let's look at the five. Top five. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to build a, um, start building out some list source lists, okay, for high equity, because that's what we want to focus on um, initially. So switching back over to list source, uh, we're going to go back to the homepage here, listsource.com. All right. And we're just going to go and say create your own. And we're going to do uh, an order of priority here. Uh, for me, what I like to focus on is going to be anything that is free and clear first. Okay. Free and clear. And then anything 65 and plus. Anything that is unknown uh, equity, 65 plus. And anything that's unknown, excuse me. So let's, let's, um, I'll show you inside my, my RI SEPT account. Um, what I, what I look like as far as my high equity lists. Um, cause you only want one high equity list. However, um, you do want to separate that high equity out in specific circumstances. So, um, we have a free and clear list and a high equity and then, um, underneath the high equity and the free and clear, we have, uh, unknown equity and unknown equity 65 plus. But if I go into my data and I look for high equity, I'm fairly certain I have a 65 plus tag, I think. Maybe. Is it old? I don't know. I have to check with my VA. Maybe it's not under that. Maybe it's just 65. Okay. It's just the one. It's just the list. So we did free and clear. I think free and clear might include 65 plus, but either way, that's all right. We're going to go ahead and just pull it. Um, how I think it should be pulled. So geography, we're going to go ahead and choose area code now or not area code and zip code. And we're going to choose Florida and we're just going to take, and we're going to paste in those zip codes that we copied and add it. And that's going to narrow us down. So we see that's only 73,000 people. One, two, three, four, five. So someone in the chat, tell me, does anyone know my beliefs? If, if you've kind of been a, a, you know, around me for a period of time, who, who knows my beliefs as far as the amount of data that you need to get going or to like close deals. Harold, data is totally king. Who, who, knows, who knows my beliefs? Or guess. You can guess. Who knows my belief as far as how many uh, like prospects you need? Like 10,000 records maybe? 5K, 10K from Manly here. 5,000 from Craigson. Two thousand from Samantha. Twenty thousand from Tony. Three thousand from Dev. Ten thousand from Dale. Thousand from Danny. Yeah. So you don't need a lot. One from Craigton. Yeah, I like that one, Craigton. Um, a hundred percent. You know, you could literally have one record and it it could be a deal. However, it's not obviously going to be you know long term, but the the concept of one is where I want you guys' brains to be at. You do not, do not need a ton. You know, my first 250,000 came out of 2,500 records. It was like 15 deals, I think is what it was. Um, or no, it was like 10 deals maybe. Cause I know there's a 30 popper in there um, and a 50 popper. So whatever the diff averages of the other ones. So 80 of it was one deal or two deals. And then the rest of it was like split up between other deals. I don't remember the exact amount. This was like two and a half years ago. Um, but you don't need a lot. Okay. What, what matters is what you do with it. The important thing is that, um, if possible, you know, if you're investing in building a company, yes, you can get into it with no money involved. A hundred thousand percent. You just got to niche in even more, uh, and have, you know, clarity in your data and all that kind of stuff. You know, all the stuff that we teach in the weekly match minds and everything else. Um, but 
if you're going to start like a restaurant, you're going to start a bunch of other stuff. Generally, you have to have capital to build, to start it, right? We have to dedicate capital. You have to do something, right? And what's beautiful about real estate is that you can get in and you could, you can compensate. Like I said, in the very beginning, you can compensate with hustle because money equals time, time equals money. So the more time you get dedicate and the more you focus in on it, the, the more you have the likelihood of getting, you know, a deal without any money, you know, shoot. I mean, we have a deal closing. Um, well, it was supposed to be next week, but it's pushed till 15th. It's one of our flips. It's, it's a $91,000 profit margin and it was for sale by owner posted on Zillow. You know what I mean? So you can get deals for free. Um, and you can find them and you can work for them, calling for a sale by owners and, and, and just pulling a free tax link list and only focusing on that and to get your first deal. If, if that's what you want to do, you still want to have clarity and, and by having like, let's say a free tax delinquent list and then a $50 a month budget, you upload that to REI SIFT and now you can check vacancy on a tax delinquents and now you can kind of press against them like that. However, the more insight you get, the more that you can, you know, leverage that and expand out and have like a full marketing cycle. Um, so uh, what we're going to focus on is free and clear um, because I want to see the free and clear and vacants if possible. And that's where I think it's going to be the best. And then because there's a tax delinquent list um, that you can get straight from the county and Dade, that's what I'm going to pull down. Um, I think the tax delinquent list is kind of like jacked up in Dade. Uh, so, or, you know, I'm going to show how I would clean it up and to get it to a 50% solution. However, I don't have obviously the time to do that and I don't do that in my own business. So, um, I'm going to put you in the right step, but the auto lead gen challenge, we'll show you guys, you know, how you, you can take these steps, document them, and then have your VA do them for you to make all this automated so that you don't have to worry about doing it. You can just focus on closing deals, um, which you can learn obviously in the closer Olympics. Um, so I'm going to close this out, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and finish our criteria here. So we have our zip codes narrowed down. The next thing we need to do is switch over to property and we're going to focus on single family residences. So we're going to do property type. And then we're going to do the single family residence uh, shortcut here and then click add. All right. We're going to do last market sale date and we're going to make sure that it's 1900. And then we're going to go back at least five years. Okay. Because we don't, we want enough, we want the chance for there to be equity in the property. This is going to kind of alleviate some of those that much more. Um, so now we're down that, that removed, uh, 20,000 records right there. So that's good. We're going to choose no preference on our owner status. Okay. No preference. I don't care if it's owner occupied or absentee. Then we're going to do corporate owned, uh, no preference and address complete list, uh, completeliness, no preference. Okay. Can anybody answer why I've done what I've done here? Someone, someone give me some, some options in the chat. Or just say IDN or IDK. I don't know. Hey, Tyler, uh, when I look at these videos, sometimes for the list source thing, they said exclude trustee owned properties because people can't find trustees for some reason. Yeah. That's what they want you to think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Catch you, bro. <laughs> um, Mike has it right as far as REI SIF will help sort out the data better. Um, there's two different reasons. Um, the first and foremost is a trustee is very, very important to, under, to know who's a trustee and who's not. Um, because of the fact, uh, like Man, Manly just said, you know, a lot of people don't focus on them. But a trust, anyone ever hear of a life estate trust? Why is something in a life estate? If it wasn't working, I'd have an answer for you. Hard to pay full attention. That's all good, Alberto. I feel you. Um, so trustee, if something's in a life estate trust, what does that mean if it's in probate? It means they don't have to go through probate. So if you have probate lists and you have a uh, high equity, that's a uh, trustee data. That means that um, you're automatically going to um, know or you're inherited. Guess what you're actually not going to see on a probate list? life estates. Why? Because they don't have to file probate because they're going to, they're the life estate's going to take care of all that for them. That's one of the beautiful things about doing a life estate. So if anybody on that matter, if anybody has any elderly in their family that is, does not have all their assets in a life estate, you guys are fucking up, especially since you have the knowledge. It's your job to take care of your family. So make sure you guys do that. 
and, um, and advise them on, on how to take care of their assets properly because those assets are a family thing, not, not a them thing. It's, it's everybody. You know, otherwise you have to spend $5,000 just to get it to who it needs to go to. And you're gonna have all this fighting and all this other BS. Get that shit taken care of beforehand. Um, but nevertheless, uh, trusts are important. Trust can be found. It can happen. Just look at the deeds. There's a whole process around it. And REI said, we're actually adding a really awesome, awesome, awesome. I can't, I can't wait for it. Uh, feature to be able to build processes around that you have in your business to be able to bring things down there. We're calling it this. I think we're gonna call it like the sift line or something like that. Um, but uh, you know, who's a really good person to follow for this tactic with the companies and the trusts is uh, home uh, HPHS home buying. I always get it spun around by HPHS. So search HPHS, Charlie um, inside of Facebook. And if you just type HPHS, you'll find their group, follow them. They, they literally focus on pretty much this exact tactic. Um, and what's beautiful about REI Sift is when you upload your data, it'll break all that information apart so that you have trustees and you guys are going to see this if we get any. So what we're going to focus on now is we're going to build out some save criteria. So we're going to go back to property and now we're going to choose equity percentage. We're going to choose a hundred to a hundred. We're going to add that. Okay. So that's 24,000. That's quite a bit. Um, and probably because, uh, there's a lot of people that have a lot of money in, in, especially in those condos, I'm sure. Um, so the next thing that we need is, um, let's see, let me, let me look through this zip code. That's market sale date. Let me go ahead and just so I make sure, cause I don't do this stuff in my business, uh, very often. Um, so unless I'm doing analysis. So let me make sure we have everything that we need here. Oh, see, my free and clear is 65 plus. So um, let's go ahead and see. See, that's all the zip codes I'm in for this list. 100 to 100, last March sale date. I, yeah, I do that, age 65 plus. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So um, we'll do the 65 plus one here. Just know that you could pull a free and clear that isn't 65 plus. Um, but it's kind of a motivation list. So we'll do demographics, uh, individual or house. Uh, I think it's individual or household, uh, 65 plus add. And that should take us down quite a bit. I would think. Yeah. So now we're getting, now we're getting there. So 3000. Um, the next thing that we need that I normally do, I just don't know that market enough to do it is I like to remove out the stuff that can't be really wholesale. Um, like in my market, I focus on pulling high equity data. That's houses when they were originally purchased. I want them to be purchased for like, you know, $1 to $300,000, um, on all of my data, but let's go ahead and do that here. I mean, we can look at what the average, this is all part of the, um, yeah, good people, uh, Charlie, for sure. Um, let's go ahead and look at this again. Let's look at Zillow. And what we want to find is kind of what is our average price range here? So we see 455,000 being pretty uh, normal for a regular house. So we probably don't want to exclude those um, because there could be some deals in those 246, 405. But notice that a lot of the stuff that's selling is around that price range. So we can see our median price range is probably right around 350. Um, so that's what I would focus on is somewhere around there and same thing with the other zip code. Um, so let's go ahead and let's take our, our list source list and let's go ahead and, and remove it down to, um, the properties that the last market sale price was between a dollar and let's say 600,000. Okay. Um, I think that would be ideal because even condos are a little, that are a little bit more expensive, if they're bought for 600,000, they, they could be a deal there at this point. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. So let's do last market sale price. And we're going to do from $1 up to um, 600,000. I don't know why that's showing there. It's definitely not happening right now. So I don't think I applied it. Oh, wait, this is my list. Oh, shoot. I closed the wrong list out. No, son of a. All right, I got to rebuild that real quick, guys. I literally closed the wrong list out just now. 
the, the, the wrong tab. And since I'm in incognito mode, I can't reopen it. So let me rebuild that really fast. No problem. You guys just get to see it all over again. Uh, so we're going to go state, Florida. Let's grab those zip codes again. Okay. And, or no, state, we need zip code. Okay. Florida. Add. All right. And then we need property type. We're going to do uh, it's parking type, property type, single family residences, add demographics. Uh, we're going to choose households, uh, age. We're going to choose 65 plus add. Um, we're going to do options. No preference, no preference, no preference, no preference. Property type, we're going to go to equity percentage and we're going to go 100 to 100. Add that. I'm going to do last market sale date. We're going to go back to 1900 and go back to 2015. Add. And then we're going to do so 100 to 100, 1900 houses, 65 plus. Uh, now we're going to do uh, last market sale price and we're going to go one to 600,000. My stomach is growling. Okay. So now we're down to a thousand and fifty nine records that are elderly in the top zip codes that we want for a hundred to hundred percent equity. Uh, so free and clear. Um, and they are, in the price range, the medium price range we really want to be in, um, single family residences, all good. So we're going to save criteria and we're going to call this the, the Dade uh, free, can't see, free and clear, 65 plus. Click save. And what we're going to do real quick, I saved that so that I can go back to it, but let's go ahead and look at the demographics. If we remove the age, we get quite a bit more. So there's, a, so what if we focus on where people normally kind of focused on like usually like 40 plus, so 40 to 64. And let's look at that. Just, we're just kind of getting data insight, so a lot less. So there's a lot of people that own properties free and clear that are from, let's say, eight to eight, 19 is what they have. So 19 to 39. Let's see how many that is. That or there's a lot of, a lot of data that doesn't have the age notice on there. So not very many there. Yeah, so there's a lot of data that doesn't even have the age so almost what I would do is I would, I would try to, oh, here you go. Unknown. That's what we need to worry about. So unknown age, this would probably be a really good list too. So this 18,000 that's unknown, that's probably what I would, I would also pull that at some point because a lot of these could be elderly, you know? So I'm just going to go ahead and save criteria and just kind of do the date free and clear unknown uh, age and save that just for now. Um, all right, cool. So we have that one. The next one that we're going to look at um, is we're just going to change our equity percentage is pretty much all we're going to do. Uh, we're going to move our age um, and then we're just going to change our equity percentage to 40 to 99%. Okay. So we're going to go equity percent remove that. And the reason we do 40 to 99, can anyone tell me in the chat why we're doing 40 to 99? I, I would say to get more prospects, pretty much. Now that the you 90, move the criteria. The 99% parts, the main, the main, the main thing. So why, why do we only go, why do we go to 99 and not a hundred? Ooh, that's a good question. I do not know. Yeah. Um, to, to exclude like the free and clear ones that you already did 
Yep, exactly. We don't want to repurchase data. Um, we want to make sure that we're setting ourselves up, you know, to buy our data in a, in a really easy way, but we're still buying it no preference. Um, and with our price ranges narrowed down to one to 600 single family residences, our top zip codes here, we have 14,000. So at three cents a record, 14,889 times 0.03, I mean, that's $446.67. And you could literally hit that for a long time. I'm going to save this criteria. I'm not going to purchase this one. I am going to purchase the free and clear one. Um, but I'm going to save this as high date, high equity. And then I put 40 to 99%. Okay. So we're just kind of, oh. so we got that one now. So now all we're going to do is go to property and we're going to go to equity again, remove the equity, and we're just going to say unknown. And now this creates our high equity unknown list, which is 13,000 records. <laughs> oh my God. Um, so save criteria. So that's another 500, you know, that we would pay, you know, for roughly these ones. So Dade, Unknown equity. Actually, before we do that, I almost messed up. We needed to go to demographics and then choose age for 65 plus. And we need to do that separate, separate than the other one. So thousand. So we need to save criteria as date unknown 65 plus. So save that. And the other thing that I did wrong, I just realized we, I have to go back and check it is um, when I pulled the high equity, um, I should have put over like 19 to 64. Like you need to select the ages in here, including like unknown and everything if you wanted to do that. Because I would, if I buy that, that high equity right now without, without that over on the right-hand side, I already have the, you know, I would, I would be rebuying data if you have this, you know, just like with the 40 to 99%. That's if you're going to buy the data, the high equity data for based off of age. I only buy free and clear and unknown based off of age. Just in my market, it's generally usually older people that have unknown equity and older people that have free and clear. If they're a younger individual and they have free and clear, then they're probably, um, they're probably already balling or something, you know, or inherited. So um, all right. So we have that. So now, um, again, I would go like 19, I would go unknown all the way up because these are two separate lists, unknown 65 plus and unknown. And now I'm going to save this. So as just date unknown. Okay. So that's, that's all the lists from list source. There is one more list. Um, that would be, doesn't matter about sales price. It's just all about last market sale date or last market sale price rather. Remove that and then do unknown. So you don't know what the sales price is. So that's another list. So unknown sale price. Okay. Uh, we're not going to worry about saving that one though. Um, but that's a good, really niche list as well. So if we go to save searches now, uh, we're going to see the stuff that we build out, right? So we have the Dade buyers, the Dade free and clear 65 plus, the Dade free and clear unknown age, the Dade high, high equity 49.9, the Dade unknown 65 plus, and the Dade unknown. So we have a total of, uh, let's say 30, we're going to round up. So 13,000 plus um, it would be, 19,000 plus 1,000, 1,700. Did I do that right? Let me see, 13. We're just going to use single numbers here. 13, 2, 15, 19, 1. So like 50,000 records, okay? So 50,000 records times 0 0.03 is 1,500 dollars. For $1,500, you could have all the high equity that matters in your market. 
And that high equity does not expire. I don't give a shit what anyone says. 50,000 records does not expire. It's, it's high equity. Like it gets better over time. <laughs> like, like people are so stupid with that. They're like, Oh, I called through it like 15 times. I'm not getting deals. Okay. Have you called through it 15 times? Uh, you know, for over a 90 day period for as long as you've been in existence as a business, or did you just call through it 15 times, hoping that every 50,000 people are going to want to sell their house to you right now at a discount, you know, um, build your business off of longevity, not off of money that you want right in your pocket right now. However, market for least, uh, least pass to least path to resistance, like the fastest or the fastest path to money. So like, probate and, and foreclosures, it takes a lot longer for you to close those deals. So if you need money now, so focus on that, but don't just throw away your high equity data. It's really important. Um, so we're going to start a campaign against the free and clear 65 plus. That's what we're going to focus on here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and buy this data. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen though, because I don't want you to see the, my monies. Uh, so let me stop sharing. Let me answer this. Is 40% high enough equity to wholesale? Oh, a thousand percent, dude. It's 40 to a hundred percent. hundred percent, hundred percent. You can have uh, 40% equity. In fact, in list source, you can go to 20% equity. You can go to 99% equity. You know, really the biggest thing is that they've had at least five years. There's tons of different ways to do stuff. Remember, think of yourself, stop, stop thinking of yourself as wholesale companies, you know, um, think of yourself as real estate investment companies. Okay. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and purchase this one. I'm going to go ahead and switch to, I'm just going to purchase list. You guys aren't going to be seeing me doing this, but I'm going to name the list Dade free and clear 65 plus all right and i'm going to let me share my screen really quick um why so i can show you guys something do not ever click this button who can tell me why This goes against everything, what everyone believes in. Waylon, uh, you got it, man. They might have multiple properties. People are always like, well, I don't want to send them five mail pieces. I'm like, the hell you don't. That means you're serious. But more than anything, it means that I can see that. And I'll show you guys what I mean when I upload it. So we can kind of see what it means if we click this and see if it goes down. So it's 1099 right now. And nothing went down. So most likely there's no duplicate. There's no ma owner that owns multiple free and clear properties. That would be fucking dope though, right? That'd give me really awesome insight, you know? Um, but we're not going to click that. Uh, you click continue to check out. Um, also, a couple other things real quick. The um, selections here uh additional features or whatever um you can have it i forget how you do it but um you can have it add oh here you go additional fields some of these fields cost extra money but some of them don't so like zero dollars is adding the field for you know exemption so you could add some really interesting extra fields in list source a lot of people don't know this like land value um parcel id is a big one so if you want to overlay you know, some stuff, um, some of them you got to pay extra for, you know, parking type. Um, but if you add that on the front end, you don't have to pay extra for it on some of them, like the parking type zoning year built. It's another big one. So let's go ahead and just add that. Um, what other ones would be interesting for us here? Unit numbers. I'm not worried about, um, let's add parcel ID. just for archive purposes, legal lots, building blocks. There's a lot of stuff you can do here. Um, land value is a good one for if you're targeting anything that's like older than 1950s um, and then you get a land value on it, uh, you can see uh, for new construction. Anyway, you can do stuff like that. So you just say continue to check out and then I'm gonna go ahead and buy this and then I'll reshare. Okay. Select card, get all that visa. 
Regreso. Is this so far useful to you guys seeing, you know, this or whatever? I mean, this is like, obviously it's not going to take only like two seconds to complete. It's literally like starting a full marketing campaign and doing analysis on a market. <laughs> so. It's um, great value, bro. Thanks, Tyler. For sure, dude. Appreciate it. Um, all right. So we're going to buy that. So that's going to come to my email. I just received it. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to share my screen now, show you guys what this page looks like. So you see, you know, what it, what it costs, everything that's up with it, your transaction ID, all that good stuff. 3707 cheap. I mean, that's like for, for $37, you now have a thousand people that own a property free and clear. They're over 65. And we're going to show you just with that list real quick, what we can do with it. Um, and then we'll cover some other stuff too on how we can expand out from that. Um, so let me go ahead and get that uploaded into this giveaway folder here. Uh, oh, what am I talking about? Huh. Go to purchase lists. And you can see, like, I don't purchase data like ever. I mean, all my shit ends up expiring in here because I high equity, you don't nearly need it any, any, at any time. Export. Next. And that's the other thing. In, in list source, after six months, your shit expires. You can't download it no more. It's kind of a fucking, that's stupid actually. But that's okay. The reason why it sucks is because you can't suppress. So, um, so go to, I'm going to go to giveaway now. I'm going to take this and drag it in here, drag it, drag it in here. I'm going to show you some things about this though, before we upload it. So first of all, let's take a peek and break this down. So this is a, you know, free and clear list. Um, we can see their names, everything that's going on here. I'm going to have to sneeze in a second. Hold on. Uh, someone must be talking shit, making me sneeze. Um, so we have our owner label name, which is the full name column. In list source, when you download and you have a full and you have full names, remember we include companies. Companies would be in here. I don't know if there is any. We'll see after we upload it, but that's where companies would be. Um, so you have that. You have your first name, your last name, and you have a bunch of other information here. I mean, tons of it. It's all go all good. Uh, makes sense. Um, we have our parcel ID that we added, and then the land value. Um, and then the year built. So notice, this is what I really wanted to show you guys. Remember the whole 65 plus free and clear thing we talked about? That's what this list is. Look at the ages of these homes. You guys notice anything that's kind of common? Most of them are from 1960, you know, to 1985, roughly. Um, you have a handful that are like early 2000s because we're getting to that time now where which is kind of crazy. A 2000 house is almost like it, it could be paid off by now. Um, so that's kind of crazy. So you're putting yourself in the highest position by buying the data in the right way. Uh, you're putting yourself in the highest position to have the properties that um, want to sell, right? Th that are in that price range that are good flips, right? The other thing that you're doing is you're putting yourself in a price range of houses that are all going to need rewires. So, um, or most of them. So just keep an eye on that. Anything from 1960, you know, to 1979, um, 1980 timeframe, really it's like 1965 to 1975. They're going to need, um, they're going to need, uh, probably a rewire. Um, but anything above or anything earlier than 1965 or whatever, generally it doesn't just verify, but a lot of people don't know the reason why, um, uh, you know, there's aluminum wire versus copper wire is, is not, because, you know, they decided to use aluminum. They started with copper, but copper got really expensive in the 1970s. 
and they switched over to aluminum during that time because people couldn't build houses. So that's, that's why. Um, a little bit of a history lesson. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we already have it downloaded. So we're just going to go over to REI SIF now. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a staging account. Um, and then I'm going to upload all this for all the sake of all this example and everything. Um, and then, uh, manly, you can go in if, if you, if you want to and create that, or I can create it. Actually, that's what I'll do. I'm going to create it under this one. And then I'll just, we'll just go in and change the email and, and get everything swapped out for you. If you decide to actually, um, continue this journey in real estate. So we're just going to do sign up. Okay. Sounds good, bro. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to say, I'm just going to use your name too. Manly Hines. Do you use a company name? What's your company name, Manly? Do you have a company in LLC? Uh, I don't have a company name. Uh, well, I just got my email address. Uh, but I got to get the LLC for the company name, but it's Ronin. It's R O N I N property. Solutions. Dig it. All right. Um, let me see what email could I use that isn't already one inside of REI SIFT. Let's do like um, 100. Okay. Hopefully this will work doing the email like that. If not, we'll have to go back and redo it. Continue. Let me stop sharing so I can put my card in. Oops. All right, let's go reshare. All right, so a few things. I'm gonna cover real quick. Notice we're on a dashboard now, so zero to one. Y'all, if there's messages that pop up in a platform in the bottom right corner, you know, don't just click that shit off. They usually mean something, you know, like welcome to REI SIFT, you know, let us know if you need anything. Uh, this one's really important. Do not forget to join the Facebook mastermind. So Manny, go ahead and do that. Uh, just type in REI SIF Mastermind. You can join in on that. Um, and then, you know, follow the Instagram. Uh, I'm going to heart this because I think it's totally awesome. Um, and then what's the last one? The last one is, you know, welcome to REI SIF. You open it up and it's a pop-up. Actually, that should pop up right away. I need to change that. It's not supposed to be this message. It's supposed to automatically pop up. Um, so that's interesting. So um, it talks about joining the, the thing and then registering for the weekly mastermind. Uh, or the the weekly onboarding. So I need to fix that. I didn't realize that doesn't pop up right away. It should have popped up right here when I hit in here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and upload that list now. And you guys are going to see um, what happens once we upload it. Let's go to documents, downloads, choose the free and clear. Okay. We're going to drag over the owner label name to the full name column. Everything else will auto map. Ah, oh, damn it, list source. Um, so notice how this is something you guys got to watch out for list source. Do you guys see inside the example data here, the auto map that says equals quotations and then a zip code and then a quotation. Um, I don't know why list source does that, but it fucks it up. 
I'm going to go ahead and just remove the zip codes because in REI SIFT, if you have um, the city, state, and the property address, it'll automatically append zip codes. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to remove them. However, I do want to show you how you would fix that real quick. You would come into the list source list and you'd go to the zip code and notice how, where's that? Property. Notice how if you click inside the cell here in the top left corner, it says equals. What you have to do is insert a column to the left, copy the whole column, and then paste it as values only. And now it'll get rid of that and you can delete out that column. Um, so that's what you'd wanna do, all right? So let's go back over to REI SIFT. Um, that's my account, I don't want that one. All right, so we just removed the zip code so that it'll just auto map them, no big deal. Click continue. This is not skip trace, so we're not gonna choose that. We are gonna create a list name though, and we're gonna call this free and clear, create. We're gonna tag it with a tag called 65 plus. And when you're managing data and you're, and you're just marketing in general, guys, what you really wanna do is always ask yourself four questions. Where did it come from? Where has it been? Where is it going? And when did it happen? Okay, so this came from list source. So we know that, that way in the future, we could always filter by the tag list source and see all the data that we have that came from list source, really important. Um, and we can also see if we buy data from another location, if it stacks up with list source, then we're like, well, fuck, I might as well just buy list source. You see what I'm saying? So there's a lot of insight you can gain to save yourself uh, money in your business and have insight and, and tighten up those leaky faucets. The next thing is when we purchased it. So LP for me, it stands for list purchased and it's May, 2020. So now we know when we bought this. Why is that so important? Because anything that's tagged with list purchase 2020, if in one year for now, it doesn't say list purchase May 2021, we know that we're, we're missing you know, data. Um, we can track that. And then we create a task and we use um, a, a company to track project management where we create for our marketing team, there's tasks preset out um, and reminders to make sure that we keep up with our data and when we need to get it. Um, so we use a project management system for that. Um, in REI SIFT, we are adding tasks as well and a calendar so that you'll be able to just schedule it here within uh, REI SIFT, which will be really helpful and a lot of other really cool things. We're going to use import and only in append only. Um, and that's it. Uh, we don't have a where has it been yet because we haven't done anything with it. It's brand new list. But we added the 65 plus in here just in case we get other free and clear data that's not, you know, 65 plus. We can go ahead and just filter by free and clear and 65 plus or not and you're going to see everything. So we're going to go ahead and click save and that's going to start uploading that list. If we go to our list page, we're going to notice that we have the free and clear there. While that's uploading real quick, what we're going to do is we're going to go into, uh, we're going to search Dade County tax, tax collector or either one. It'll get us the same place. Go to the website. We're going to try and find this tax delinquent list real quick. I got to sneeze again. Ah, okay. Let me check uh, the chat real quick. Got to run, handling the kids, and then a conference call. Thank you so much for the info. Hey, no problem, buddy. Appreciate it, dude. Um, all right, Craig Tinney, man, do your thing. Um, first home purchase possible. Okay, cool. All right, so um, Miami Dade. So we're looking for the tax collector. We want to find something that says pay my taxes um, or something like that. Ooh, gas and oil utility taxes. That would be interesting. Um, Try credit and collection, pay my debt and county debt, pay online. I feel like, hmm, I feel like either they redid their website or I'm on the wrong website. Let's see, uh, Dade County. Oh, they did, Samantha? Oh, you go to services? Here it is. Okay, so you click on here and you click on reports and then um, scroll down and click real estate. And then, I think it's loading. This is stupid. Can you get rid of this message? Kind of dumb. 
Um, what we're going to do is we're going to look for the, let me zoom in for you guys, look for the one that says delinquent. Property delinquent, realist. I don't know what. See, they create these. They'll add stuff in here for other people. All right, Dev, man, do your thing. Study, man. Good luck on your test, whatever it is. Um, so you got public taxes, month, date, year, and then you have public taxes, RE, Delling list. So a lot of times what happens is um, if you call the county and you have them make a list, they'll make it available here. So I'm going to search this one first. So after you click it, you got to say view selected report. Okay. But then after you click view selected report or run selected report, one or the other, uh, you got to click search over here. Um, but I'm going to change, I'm going to have the property address sort by, and then account names. Okay. So we're going to see it's working on something right now. So let's see what happens after it finishes working. And then we'll, uh, go from there. It's a lot more data in Dade County than in other locations. So, okay. So it just populated it. So click search to run report. We're just going to wait. It's still loading something. So we're going to let it think. Never want to click anything if there's a spinny ball. You always get yourself in an even worse situation than you're already in. You could, but um, PropStream is generally, uh, we only use that really for federal tax liens. You want to go straight from your county. Yeah, it's going to take more time to clean up, but you, you really want to get it from the source. Put, it, put a process in place to do it. All right, cool. So we have... Um, a list here. It looks like tax, tax roll here is 2018. Holdings company uh, issued the certificate already, so they're delinquent, but we want to look for unpaid. See how everything says unpaid? All right. And what we're going to do once we export this list, we're going to go by tax year and we're going to choose the tax year, um, well, 2018, but you're going to have basically duplicates here. I'm going to show that when we download it. And then you can also filter down by more. But notice how like this doesn't have anything here. So some of the property addresses, they're not going to be fully clean. Notice how they're not like perfect. So that's why we got to, you know, we got to clean them up a little bit. But we're going to go ahead and click the um, CSV here to download. And I'm going to add my email in here. We're going to use this one again. I'm just going to click download now. You can also have it emailed as well. Um, it's going to take a minute. It's probably pretty big. We got 80, 885. So we have 44,000 tax delinquent records here. We're going to show you guys how you clean this up a little bit because there's some that you don't need. You only need, listen, if they're delinquent in 2000 or if they're delinquent in 1999, they're still delinquent in 2020. So the only thing we got to care about are the ones from uh, two years ago is what we're going to focus on. Anything three years or older. Um, so you could upload it two different, you could upload it in two different lists inside of REI SIFT. Um, if you wanted to as well, you could upload the ones that are um, delinquent in, at the two year mark. And you can also upload, you know, the ones as three year and just add a tag to the two years versus the three years, because anybody who's delinquent for three years is now getting ready to go to tax auction, at least in the state of Florida. So, you know, you might market to them a little bit differently. Um, this is taking forever to do this one. Let's go ahead and go over to property records and see what we got here so far. Let's click on our list. That's our tags. So we have all of them are in here. Notice we have the tags here. So we, we have a tag on all those records. So we're gonna go to our account now and we're gonna click on our clean data and are incomplete. So uh, notice how we have quite a bit of incomplete data. We have 50 pages of incomplete data. You see why? We have some that, you know, we couldn't get the zip code for. If I would have uploaded them with the zip code, maybe we would have already 
had them, you know? Um, so you could, you could do that. Um, because remember I removed the zip code over to the left. Sometimes when it goes through the address normalization, it doesn't append to every single one just cause it can't find that address in the USPS. Having the zip code in here might've made it better, but it still might not have address normalized, um, just because of the way the address name is. And that's why it's so important to clean your data because, um, we want this to check green from the USPS because that way if we send mail to the address, see mail goes through a, a system. It's not like everyone, they read every single one. It goes through a computer and if the computer doesn't recognize the address, it gets returned to sender. So that's why it's so important to make sure everything is normalized. You know, so what you would do is you'd clean these up um, or you know, if you just go and do it how I showed you here by copying these ones and making it to where it was correct, um, you would be fine there as well. Um, and then re-upload them. And, and then it would have a zip code for every single one of them. And maybe it would be less than, you know, 50 uh, records that are, are jacked up. But that's okay. We don't really need to care about that right now. Um, but we could take care of those over time. We click on trust. We don't have any trust. We click on companies. There was no companies. Um, if there was, they'd be there and it would, you'd be able to see it. Some other reasons why something becomes incomplete is because notice this one has an S and, and then the name. Just an S is not a name. So we got to go find that name. So we would search them in public records to find them. Let's go ahead and click on our clean data, which is about 1,020 records. And the very first thing I want to do, because we want to get the, to the money right away, is we're going to filter by vacant property, yes. And now we have 20 properties that are vacant out of this free and clear 65 plus. Who says that that's probably not a motivated list? If it's free and clear, vacant, and 65 plus. I mean, that's pretty balling, right? I mean, that's... That's pretty dope. And then we're going to go and we're going to narrow it down again. We're going to say absentee. Yes. So we have two of them now that are absentee. One of them is absentee out of state in Vegas, right? So that's pretty dope. So we're just going to switch to absentee. So if I say absentee, no, we see that all of these are owner occupied. 20 properties that are, you know, or so that are um, 15 or whatever it is. Let's see how many are on the other page, like 11. Um, so they're owner occupied and vacant. If we don't get phone numbers for these, you know, we need someone to go door knock. We need someone to find the relatives. Um, but nevertheless, this is going to be our, our most motivated to start off with. So we're going to select all these. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen because I'm going to add some credits to this account real quick. So let me stop sharing and let me click buy credits. And I'm going to add um, like $25 into this account. 4504. You guys know I have a visa now. So. Okay. Okay. Oops. Okay. I said I had the wrong security code. Let me try this again. Okay, we're good there. I have to leave now, but I will rewatch this later. It's been great information. Hey, no problem, Omar. Appreciate it, dude. We now share the screen again now that I did that. Um, refresh here, and we're going to see that I have $25 in my account now. Now let's go and narrow back down to the clean data that is vacant. Also, if you click on your incomplete data, notice how if I do vacant, yes, we actually have some incomplete vacant data as well. Um, and then once you clean up the data, there might be even more, but we're going to click back on clean data. And we're gonna notice that we have um, the 20 records again. And then that's pretty much it. We're gonna select all of this. And we're gonna say actions, skip trace, apply, next. And remember, we, don't, we wanna know where it's been. So we're gonna add a tag saying it's been the REI SIF skip. And I'm gonna say A01 for attempt, attempt one and click confirm. And now we've sent 13 property owners for skip tracing. Um, so we deducted a dollar and 95 cents from my balance. So if I refresh my screen, you're going to notice I have a balance that's 2305 less. And I'm going to get an email. If I click over in activities, I'm going to see this is how many uh, were sent. Um, there's 13 properties with 13 owners. If there was 
an owner that owned multiple properties, we would only send that owner once. We wouldn't send it multiple times um, to try and save money, obviously. Um, and we've processed four of those owners so far. If I refresh, we'll see I processed 11. Let's refresh again, 13. So we're all finished and we can see the status is now complete. So we go back to my records page and then we can actually go back to activity again and see um, zero with no results. So we got results for every one of those. So that's pretty dope. So if I go back to clean records and then filter by, down by vacant, yes, you're going to see that every single record has a green hashtag. Green hashtags mean that they have phone numbers, okay? Yellow hashtags mean that something was skip traced and it came back with no results. If you remember when we uploaded data, there was an option to say this is skip traced. So it doesn't matter if this was skip traced somewhere else or inside of REI SIFT, you can have the same benefit to be able to say, hey, this was skip traced and I don't have phone numbers. In our case, we don't have any, but if I go into my account, uh, which I'm, I'm not gonna do right now, but if I go into my account and then say skip trace, yes, numbers, no, you're gonna see a bunch of data that you know, doesn't have phone numbers. Um, you know, be, but they were skip traced at another platform or maybe even in REI SIP, we just get numbers back, but we just had 100% hit rate, which is pretty dope. Um, so what we're gonna do now uh, is we're gonna start marketing, right? So let's go ahead and let's stop and let's share my iPad again to go back to um, the beginning on where we are at in our process here. Okay, so we're gonna share, oh, share iPad. Let's go ahead and screen mirror, boom. Okay, so um, what have we done so far? We did the market analysis, we got the zip codes, we pulled the data, we cleaned the data, we are going to decide on campaigns right now. So we're on step five out of 10 right now. Oh, and we kind of skipped, uh, or well, we did decide the, the campaigns. We, we're going to do a vacant campaign. Vacant campaign. We already skipped trace check. So we're already done there, right? In an instant. Uh, now we're going to export and start a campaign. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop sharing this one and we're going to open up and share my computer again. All right. So what we would do also, um, I'm just, it's taken a lot longer than I anticipated, so I'm not going to go through everything, but um, I would also go in and I would pull all of my, the, the criteria for PropStream, only the niche data in those zip codes as well, right? So for example, this is one of the zip codes we pulled. So I would search that zip code and do, um, let's see, not flippers. Where is the option to do? my searches so we'll do let's do tax liens and then so we can see the tax liens there's three tax liens in that area right and that could be any type um we could do um you know other other options too so i'd pull all those as well and i would upload all that um and that's a really easy thing to to do there um as well and that would give us more but we're just going to focus on this free and clear data because i know it's the best kind of jump to to find somebody vacant um, so we're going to close out some of these screens here. I'll leave that one open. Done with list source. Oh, the county data. Let's, um, let's go ahead and see what's going on with that. Where did that go? Did it send it? It didn't download it. Oh, we had an error. Well, I'm not going to worry about that right now then. We can download that though then. Um, the site's apparently going really slow and having an error. So um, reports, that's how you get to it though. Um, we'll get that uploaded into this drive so you have it as well. Um, and then let's go here and let's go to, I'm going to use Smarter Contacts um, and start running a campaign for that. I hope we're running stuff right now. So it's going to be really hard to know what is what. Um, I wish I could send it somewhere else, but that's okay. We're going to say lists, um, upload new list, and we're going to go to REI SIFT. We're going to filter by the skip trace data we just did. But before we do it, we wanna tag it with the campaign. We wanna track what the campaign is, okay? So I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna filter by the skip trace data because that's the only stuff that we sent. Uh, I'll say numbers yes, just for willy nilly to make sure it is, but I know it is. We're gonna say select all. Remember, we wanna ask what was the four W's? Where did it come from? Where is it going? Where has it been? And when did it happen? Okay, so Actually, what I forgot to add was LS May 2020 to these. So we're going to add that. That stands for list skipped. So list skipped May 2020. So I would see REI SIFT and I'd see list skipped May 2020. So I know all this data was skip trace then. 
That way in 90 days, if all these records have tags saying no contact, no contact, no contact from, you know, my marketing campaigns, then I would know like, Hey, I probably need to reskip trace these um, either somewhere else. Or if they're, you know, really motivated, maybe I need to start calling relatives because I know that I haven't been contacting them. That's how we stop the drip. That's how we make sure that we don't see that property come back through another wholesaler's email box. And you're like, shit, I was marketing to that guy. Um, so we're going to add that. And then we're also going to add our campaign name. So we're going to call this the vacant um, May 2020 SMS. Vacant May 2020 SMS. So now this is where is it going? So this is our May 2020 you know, SMS campaign. Next month, we would filter by the same as that criteria and exclude out May's campaign. And we would be seeing, we would be seeing all the new records that entered into being vacant so that we can upload those, the vacant May, June campaign. And anybody who we hadn't reached from May would also enter into June's campaign. Okay. So we click confirm. And then we're going to uh, go ahead and export these. We're going to say, select all export. Don't delete. It doesn't matter. It gives a confirmation either way, but uh, we're going to say vacant May 2020 SMS. Always keep your names common throughout everything. Never like re change up your names and stuff. So now we're going to go here. We're going to drag and drop it into Smarter Contacts. I've seen someone just said something, so I'm trying to open up chat. One second. When you reach out, to the leads and say, not interested, when do you target them again? Uh, the next, uh, well, the next month. Um, <laughs> no, it just like really depends on the, on how distressed the list is. Um, but 90 days is a pretty good one. Um, cause we kind of do different targets. All right. So we uploaded it and then click upload. Now what we're going to do is I already have a default header here. So we're going to say default and it's going to map everything for us here, but I'm going to scroll over, um, to the right. And make sure I see how it says phone, phone, uh, phone, stop, list, stop. It says list, phone under lists. We don't want that. So we're going to remove that. Um, uh, okay. Just going to remove that like that, I guess. Uh, and we're going to name this one phone. We're name this one phone. We're name this one phone. So now we have phone in all columns and it's only records with phone numbers. So that works out. So now we have that all mapped out. And now what we're going to do is, um, so we have roughly, um, what is this? So the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 times three is what I just want to see how many numbers we have. I've never mapped it like this. Normally I make them all individual rows. 13 times three is 39 and then minus one, two, three, four, minus four. So we should upload roughly 35 phone numbers here to send SMS. Click apply. Okay. And then click on list and we see. Where's that? Oh, vacant May 2020 SMS. So phone numbers 37. So we're, we're pretty much on par there. Um, uh, okay, cool. So now we have that. So now we're going to click on campaigns. We're going to click create new campaign. And then we're going to name this list again, same exact name, vacant May 2020 SMS. I'm actually going to add this and say Dade just because I have other vacant campaigns. We're going to select the list, select the message. I do generic it just says, um, Hey, so, Hey, first name, are you interested in selling this address? Hope you are safe during these times. Kind of tailored it a little bit to the to the current market. Then we're going to say schedule your campaign. Uh, we're not doing a schedule. We're going to say send all leads at once. We'll say no, uh, or actually yes. Well, we'll say no for now. Uh, yes, let's just do them all at once um, because it's not very numbers, very many numbers. Um, and then we're going to say use static number. Um, see, it says lead sent fourteen. I wonder, it still said phone numbers. So I've never sent it like this. I'm curious to see how this is going to send because usually use static number. No, I'm going to say send campaign. I'm going to click through this 30. Oh, it's still seven, sending it to every single number. So it's 14 leads, but different numbers to each. So that's cool.
14 contacts, click OK, then click Confirm. All right, so those are going out. Uh, hopefully, um, okay, thanks. If you want to take a look at the house, you can contact Megan Spears. Dang it, Megan. I know, I know who Megan is, Christopher. Okay, I know she's a realtor and she does really well. Good for Megan. Um, so we're going to wait. We're just going to see, um, see what happens here. I'm going to tell my lead manager to not answer any text for a second here. Um, Hey, don't uh, answer any SMSs right now. I'm doing a uh, campaign uh, for a training. So just let me run it. It's only like 40 numbers. So I don't even, I mean, we don't, I might not even get any responses. So we'll see. Okay. So let's, um, let's see that. We can then click on campaigns. We can click on it. We can see, so it sent out the 35. Um, we can click on report and see um, out of that, how many sent. So SMS delivery, 45%, which is pretty typical because some of those might be landlines. Um, so that that's on par with what I get in my campaigns. And you can see my deal machine ones was 35%. Hasn't finished sending yet though. Um, 47% and so on. So we'll see what kind of responses we get if we get any responses here. Um, but that's sent out. See this person sent back wrong number. I'm just gonna be like, oops, my bad. Notice it's from the vacant May campaign. Cool, and I'm just gonna change him to wrong number. Easy enough. And then I'm gonna add him to my DNC. I would normally say a little bit more, but that's all I'm gonna do right now. I think you have the wrong person, vacant May campaign. Oh, my bad, thanks. If you know. Anyone looking to sell or see a property needing some love when you drive around? Hit me up. Sorry again. Okay, something like that. Send, wrong number. And I'm not going to add her to DNC uh, right now because in case she responds back. Okay, so that's literally all you do. And you go and you start responding back to all of them. Okay. Um, and then as you get wrong numbers and stuff, we can't do it with, with smarter contacts, uh, or even, uh, call tools right now. But the idea is over time, you know, you want to update your data with that same exact premise. Right. And obviously we don't have very much data there. It's only like, you know, 37, you know, one. So it's, you know, the chances that you get somebody right away, especially from SMS, you're also going to want to call th through that campaign as well, because, um, Yeah, I mean, that's basically what we do, Charlie. We nurture the campaigns. It's, it's, we, we continue to hit through them multiple times and we kind of suck it dry as, as much as we can. And then we just continue to update our high equity data with scenarios that's going on with other people's lives um, and, and continue to get you know, deals off of the same data you know, over and over. And just, we just add in more niche data over time. We'll see uh, if any more come in while we kind of sit here. Um, what I'll do now, I mean, that's pretty much, we just literally did the whole, all, we just finished all 10 steps from start to finish there. You know, we, stop sharing you stupid thing. Okay, so what we did is we went and we searched the market. We found the zip codes. We pulled the data. The data that I think is the most important to pull right away. Um, we then decided on a campaign, which we chose vacant uh, with, you know, 65 plus. Uh, we skip traced the data. Um, we exported it. We uploaded it to a campaign in Smarter Contacts. Uh, then we responded towards two people that have responded thus far. Um, some of those are landlines, so they're not going to hit on SMS. So I would also, especially since it's only 20 of them, I would manually, di manually dial the rest of the numbers as well. Um, after I, uh, you know, went through the SMS campaign, um, we responded to a few and the next thing is closing deals. And obviously in order to close deals, you got to do one through nine, you know, re repetitively. 
Um, and then to close the deals, you know, you could definitely check out Closer Olympics, you know, for, I think it's like 90 bucks or something like that. Um, and you're all set. So let's talk about, you know, what it costs to actually set up what I just did. This is literally a campaign. You would just skip trace more and you'd send more. Okay. So let's talk about what this is. So you guys have an idea, like if you're not marketing right now, what you would need to continually like do marketing and, and be in front of people. You can see, I got responses back from two people already. Um, you know, and, and, you know, yeah, it took me, you know, explaining this for the last, uh, two and a half hours to get to this point, but literally I'm in that point where any, any response that comes back could be 30 grand in my pocket. The only thing that's here now is time and consistency. That's the only thing we need. You have the knowledge now. Literally, you guys have all the knowledge right now. Anybody who rewatches Pat through this has all the knowledge to literally up and start marketing in, in a market in less than two and a half hours. Um, and for me, if I was actually doing it and not having to teach, you know, it would be like less than 15 minutes. Okay. Um, so let me uh, share this and let's talk about everything, you know, that I just kind of spent just now uh, and what it would be, you know, moving forward. So, you know, to buy the data, We've seen already if we wanted all data, we know that it would cost us from what we've seen $1,500 for all high equity. Spent today was only, uh, that's not how you spell only, only basically 40 bucks. Okay. So that's spent. All right, REI SIFT. We're in our seven-day trial right now. Um, but uh, the plan we had is $49 a month thereafter. So, but we haven't spent anything yet, but that's what that would be. Okay, and uh, skip tracing is um, I, I uploaded... $25 because that's the minimum upload price because of like servicing fees that I have to pay. Um, but I only spent a um, dollar like 49 or something like that. That's how much I spent. Um, and then uh, Smarter Contacts, which I'm going to say SC, uh, I think is 150 a month is the plan that I have in there. Um, so, but they have, we're now we're, well, I'm not in the free trial, but you guys would be in the free trial. Um, and you also get a thousand free messages a month with that. And also right now, I think it's like 0 0.025. Well, I'm still in, well, I'm not in the free message no more, but it's like 0.25 after that. So I would have spent just now maybe like $5. So for less than $50, I marketed to free and clear, really targeted list, uh, all clean data. And literally all I would do if I wanted to continue now is I would skip trace the rest. And it, it, just with this niche list, skip trace the other, you know, basically uh, 1100. I would clean the other ones up and I would skip trace the other 1100, which would cost me uh, like $165. Okay. I would SMS them. And then I would continue to do that. And then I would also manual dial the others. Um, so you can see that if you were to do that, I wouldn't have to skip trace them again for a while. But then if I wanted to buy all the data, all 1500, and then you get that tax list, which is 100% free, get it cleaned up. Then we start really expanding. It can really niche in on our, our, the marketing campaigns. Because once you have all the, you know, if it only costs me, you know, this much for all high equity data that matters, you know, I want to knock that out if I have, if possible. I mean, for literally less than, you know, um, what it would cost to, um, for, for one semester, not even one semester in college, one, one, well, yeah, one semester in college, less than that. I mean, mine was 700, that's less than one course, one college course. You know, you can literally have enough data and everything for a whole year of marketing, uh, then the rest of it's free data. And, and have a company that could produce you millions. I, my first 250,000 came from only uh, 2,500 records. This right here, and it was an eviction list, a free eviction list from my county, 2,500 records. Uh, so they were, they were absentee, high equity, and eviction was a 30K deal. 
I remember the other one was tax delinquent, uh, owner occupied, um, free and clear. Um, she bought it three years ago. I bought it for 35 K. She had bought it for 75 K the year after I put 10 grand into it and I sold it for 125. Uh, that was another deal that was, uh, in that first quarter, um, a bunch of them, right? Um, so the high equity data is really good insight, but learning how to get evictions and tax delinquents in your market, that's free, you know, and then leveraging that data, you'll sit on this 1500 data for eternity. It doesn't, it does not expire. You do not ever need to buy more. That's I'm good for Dade County. If I buy all that for 1500, I'm good for Dade, Dade, Dade County. Yes. I, anybody that in the next year for now, from now, some people are going to end up entering into my new buy criteria. Some people are going to, some people right now are four years in nine months, they've owned a property and in the next three months, boom, they're going to hit that equity range that they need to be in to qualify. If I end up, you know, going through this list a bunch of times, I would just, you know, loosen up that criteria a bit. A lot of companies just literally just market to all people period and not even, and then, you know, you add other marketing channels in there, but for now, just for SMSing, I mean, literally for less than, you know, $350 a month, you know, you can have a solid, consistent marketing campaign. The biggest thing now is as you're sending these SMSs, let me go ahead and move this somewhere else on the screen here. As we're sending SMSs, we want to track some things. So we want to ask, we want to say how much data. So, so the number of phones, in this case, it was 39 or 37. Okay, then we want to know deliver percentage. In this case, it was like 47% because we don't know how many of these are landline versus mobile. We don't really know that right now. REI SIFT, is, it does have the ability or is going to have the ability, already does, and it, um, you got, it's just not really launched. Um, to separate between landline and mobile. You're able to kind of see that when you, when you upload your list. And if you skip trace in REI SIFT, you know, you get it as well. Um, and then you could just export only the mobiles uh, that way. And then this, this would go up if you did that, right? If you only had mobiles, that would go up like a ton. Um, but you, then you'd have your landlines that you'd, own, that you'd want to cold call, right? So deliver percentage and then response. Response percentage which not everyone's finished responding yet on that, uh, that we just sent out. So we're not going to, we don't know what this is right now. And then next one is leads. And after leads, the next one is contracts. And then the next one is closed. And the last one is revenue. Okay. So once we understand how many phones we sent, what's the delivery rate? What's our response rate? How many leads do we get from it? How many contracts do we get from that? How many leads do we close from that? And how much revenue do we produce? Those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven metrics. Okay. We could literally look at that and say, great. I made 15,000 from 37. Let's up this to a hundred. Theoretically, I should at least make a minimum of, uh, you know, 30,000 now, because you're going to have a percentage from in between here under between closed in revenue or contracts and closed. You're going to have the closed ratio, which is like, Oh, I got 10 contracts under, I got 10 properties under contract, only seven of them closed. So to project revenue, you're going to have to know that number. But until you close a bunch of deals, you're not going to know that, that average. So how useful is seeing this right here? Is that useful to you guys? Let me know um, in, in the chat if that's, you know, really good to understand. Because, I mean, that's, it's huge. So, um, so there you go there. Now that's everything. All right. So what I want to know from you guys now, let me move some of this over here. What I want to know from you guys, I'm just going to move this down, all this down here. For more space. Okay. I want to know your insights. So we talked about SMS um, and leads and prospects. 
So I want to answer this with you guys. I want to know what kind of insights did you get from this? Like, what was your biggest insights? Like your top three. Let's see what the most common insight is that was gained from this training. Um, I would say the 65 free and clear, just uh, narrowing that list down too from like all the other ages, just to narrow your list and make it more niche. That's what I got pretty much. Yeah, and as you get more lists with REI SIF, it even narrows it in even further and you can then break apart those campaigns. Been listening at work. I'll really digest all this when I get home and watch the replay. Thanks for the in-depth training. For sure, Alberto, for sure. Um, so if you would have purchased the entire list, would you text everyone and cold them simultaneously? Uh, it depends, Waylon, on the data. Um, there, I have a free whole onboarding course at REI SIF that covers marketing cycles. And you just kind of kind of decide based on for your budget what you would want to do. Um, there's cycle A and cycle B. Uh, cycle A contains anything with phone numbers, uh, how, how many times you call through a list, and then what marketing strategies you use after you call through a list a few times. You know, for us, we cold call through everything first. If it's two stack or higher, we're going to be hitting um, everything all at once. We don't even care. But by the next month, every, all the data is updated and then new campaigns go out. Um, if it's high equity, we're just calling through that. We're not SMSing it simultaneously. Um, so it just really depends on what type of marketing uh, or what type of data you have at the, at the current time. But you can see even with one list, you know, you know, managing that and tracking what campaigns it's been on and everything is huge um, and being able to get that. And I could even check right now. I don't think we have it. When I click on property owners, I could see if there's any owners that own multiple properties. Um, in REI SIF, which is a whole another you know, tactic to try and buy portfolio deals. Um, but you know, this free and clear list, we already knew from list source that there wasn't um, multiple owners, but um, so that's another method there. So uh, someone else said the um, 12 to, uh, buyers list, buyers research or market research really. And are you guys, you guys are seeing my iPad, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other insights? What other, what else we got? We got 19 people in here. I know some of you kind of came in a little bit later, but what other insights do we have? I, like this is, this is important stuff for you guys to start, you know, generating more revenue and understanding how to market. And I covered a lot of things, even if you're a really experienced investor that, um, that you might not know as far as, you know, um, building campaigns and all that stuff is concerned. So what else we got? Need at least one more, you need at least three insights, especially when there's multiple well, people. That when you were narrowing down the buyers, you did the arm length sell just because, you know, some won't be, uh, investors for the sales. It can be inherited property from probates. Arms length. Arms length out of buyers. Okay, cool. So now the next step and most important step in this is action items. I want to know everybody right now, like um, trustees is big. Yeah, Charlie, trustees. I want to know everybody's action items. What is something they're either going to change in their business or something they're going to take action on right now, like in the next, you know, 72 hours in order to implement either straightening up your marketing um, you know, one of the biggest things to honestly, the, one of the, the biggest things that I said throughout this whole thing, um, besides the four that, the insights is where did the data come from? Where has it been? Where is it going? And when did it happen? Those four things I promise you will save you thousands of dollars, uh, in your, if not more than that. Um, so that's really huge. So make sure you guys are, are, are implementing that, but I want to know three action steps. Um, what is one action, somebody, anything, um, doesn't have to be subsequently. Generally, this is one person filling this out, but we're going to do it as a group here. Another person replied stop. So I'm going to go ahead and just DNC them. Thanks for the information. I'll be rewatching this video. Got to bounce. Appreciate the help. No, no problem. Uh, Dewey, maybe? Nguyen? 
when you spoke about trustees being more diligent with my data for sure, Charlie. Um, but it's an action, action steps. You got to do something to, that's an insight that you just said, you need an action step to actually do it. This is step-by-step action steps. We can't be vague with it. So like Waylon, you need like the next step. Like what is it you're going to do? Creating the systems, all that stuff. That's too much noise. This is action steps. Um, Charlie, um, you know, what are you going to do to be more diligent with your data? Like what's your first step to me? That would be be getting REI SIF, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> um, Alberto, I'm asking, what is the action steps? Like what's based off the training and everything, you know, what is the next action step? We, we need three different action steps that everyone's going to do to move forward. I could make assumptions what each of these mean, but they need to be like, okay, this is what I know I got to do right now. Like I need to buy what list. I need to get what systems, Waylon. I need to, closing deals is, is, is great, but you got to give yourself action steps and then you actually have to perform on them. That's a big thing. See, not breaking down the actual step-by-step -step action steps is where everyone loses, their, loses and gets lost in the noise. And this is how people end up saying they want to do something, but they don't actually, actually, they don't actually execute. And if they do execute, they execute. Uh, it's like jumping inside of a cloud. You know, they, they, they're punching or... It's like jumping inside of a cloud and then punching around in circles, not being able to see who your enemy is, right? Pull quality data. Um, I recently pulled tax limit from PropStream and wasn't very accurate. Um, I will pull from county data. Okay, so so Alberto is going to um, tax Dell from county. When are you going to do that, Alberto? Today. That's what I like to hear. Today. What else we got? Um, I would use REI SIF just to clean the data. And I, I guess I would go with smarter contacts because I guess all the other SMS companies are kind of like lagging because they're getting not shut down, but flagged by carriers. Okay. So, um, so Manny, I don't know why I said Manny, said Manly. Manny sounds good too though. Uh, Manly is going to, um, get more lists, I guess, get more data. Um, for you, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that you're, you're going to be doing because you're in the community, um, with the, like in the mastermind, you need to go start watching the units um, inside the mastermind that you requested to join. Um, and then uh, get smarter contacts. Get smarter contacts. And get more data. Um, and then you'll be able to ask a lot more and stuff in the weekly masterminds. Cedric, what's up, man? I'm going to get more data so that I can attack on top of high equity. Yep. Okay, so Cedric's more data. Okay. What else? You guys can check this out too, if you want. I put it on here because I'm going to give everyone this document here, but. You can check that out um, in order to like auto automate all this whole process after you do it once. Like after I just did this once, after you guys do this once, you, know, you guys, it would be being documented, right? And then it'd be put into a structure so that someone else can do this for us, you know, automatically all the time. So our marketing never stops. Um, and then make sure we have insight in it. So 
Um, I'm going to create the next action item for you guys, um, for everybody. Uh, and what I truly think, it's going to be more of a, um, for me and you guys both, but you know, every one of you, I know some of you already do, needs REI SIFT. If you're really gonna start to really try and do this business um, because you get the same kind of value of content you guys got today, but every single week. Um, and you know, I really care about giving really good value. Um, so that's an option. Um, the lead gen challenge, which I already put above and or put in the chat, you guys should definitely check that out. And then 100,000%, the Closers Olympics. Okay, make sure you guys go in there and check out the Closer Olympics because I mean, after you could do all this stuff you want, but you know, learning the closing styles of many different people to be able to create your own style is absolutely huge. You know, um, it, it seems, you know, like a kind of maybe a interesting, you know, thing to do to begin with to create, you know, an Olympics around closing and all this other stuff. But in the end, truly, you know, it's super, super valuable and you know they're gonna have a lot of closers that i know that are doing deals that are talking to people all the time that are being you know effective in their marketing in order to actually start closing deals so uh, many of them in fact are rei sift users um and they have their own you know some of them use other systems but um you know in the end all of them manage their data uh and they all can can do could consistent marketing in order to close deals. So that's the very first step is getting the deals coming in. And then the second step is to actually know how to like close the people. Um, so that's really pretty much everything um, there. What I'm going to do next is uh, mainly I'm going to get you, uh, you're inside of the group now, whoever needs to know, I just got an email from closer Olympics with a one hour warning. Whoever needs oh, a warning for um, starting or a warning for registration. Oh, final sales. Okay. So there you go. So go get your, go get your tickets. Um, get into the, the closers Olympics. If you're not an REI SIP user, you, like seriously, you'd be sleeping. Um, it, it's ridiculous. Um, and then if I share my screen real quick to you guys, uh, my other screen. So let me share and I'll show you guys, um, the auto, uh, or just auto lead gen challenge. You know, some of the stuff I'm going to be covering in auto legion challenge, you know, goals and strategies and budgets, how to create budgets. We're going to be going over a goals worksheet, daily breakdowns, budget breakdown, market strategy worksheet. Um, it's day one through five plus weekend homework, uh, data and systems in week two, budget breakdown and data worksheet. Um, talk, talk about how to grow your team, how to get VAs in order to do all this stuff for you. We're talking about different data, uh, the tools that are needed in order to produce automated, you know, marketing and automated teams in your business script review, what is a script and how can you build your own, then weekend homework. And then week three is SOPs and training worksheets, how to build them, uh, KPI tracking, how to, you know, track your KPIs. Uh, and the maintenance worksheet is how to actually watch weekly if you're, you know, losing money or gaining money. Um, so that's that. Then weekend homework and we have some bonus days maintaining the machine. Um, and what is next? Like what you should be doing next after you automate everything. So, I mean, this is fucking awesome. I spent a lot of time. I hand wrote on my iPad, every one of these worksheets and then had them designed out. You can kind of see some of them right here um, in order to replicate my business and my successes um, as well as all of our users into broken down actual worksheets so that you guys have clarity to get rocking and rolling. So definitely check that out. Um, I'm going to get uh, you the login to that email, uh, Manly. We got to get the email switch over to yours. Mm -hmm. And um, we have the, a lot of content inside of that Facebook group that you just requested that, that you need to go through, um, starting with the units. And, you know, we want to take action and move forward. And then you yeah. and I need to set up a time to talk about your premier skills. Okay. Okay. Yeah, for sure, cool. man. Yeah. Was, you know, I, I guess anybody have any questions? Let's do some summary Q and a here. We, we lost like half the people throughout the last two and a half hours. Um, but understandable, uh, you know, it's a lot of time in the middle of the day, but what other questions does everybody have that I can answer for you before I head out? Cause my, um, people that were coming into town arrived like an hour and a half ago. So I'm going to say hi. Hey, Tyler, got? do you do, do you know when the closer Olympic sale is over? Mm -mm. 
I do not. I, I think he just said, Alberto just said he got an email saying there's a one, uh, one hour, an hour until it finishes. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not hundred percent quite sure to be honest with you. I haven't been watching too much on it besides the fact that my buddy Q is, you know, going to be one of the closers. Actually a few of them that I know. Nothing. We don't got no more cues. All right. Cool, man. Um, manly man. Uh, let's do it. Alberto, man. Let's get it. Um, let's, uh, let's get everybody in what they need to do. Okay. You're in Hillsborough. Got you, dude. Awesome. Yeah. So y'all get in there, get the challenge, get the Olympics, get REI sift. Um, you can get smarter contacts or you could do any other type of marketing. Um, you got to understand how to market to your data, how to clean your data, how to effectively build automated marketing into your business. Because if you don't, um, that's like the very first thing, data and people are our two most important things in our businesses. Um, don't be a fly by night real estate company, you know, real estate wholesaling company, be a real estate investment company that's here for the next 60 years. Okay. Be the chase you know, of banks, you know, don't be, um, you know, someone who's just starting a, a pawn shop, you know, like be, be legit and understand this, treat this shit for real because you're building a business here. Don't look at it like you're building something that, you know, you're just going to be able to produce some money and get a fucking Lamborghini and a Bugatti and all this other shit. That's not what this is about. This is about building wealth, uh, not, you know, buying a nice flashy fucking watch. You know, those might be benefits and that might be how you decide to spend your money once you're able to do so. Um, but until you get everything else figured out, you could buy that watch, you know, but you're kind of throwing the money down the drain because in three months from now, if something happens in the market and you're not prepared, you could end up losing, you know, your whole company because you didn't properly, you know, set up your company and set up your marketing. So hopefully this was useful to you guys. If you guys have any questions, um, hit us up. Um, you can tag me in the ground zero page or you can, you know, mess me on Facebook. Uh, use me, don't abuse me, please though. Um, because I do have a lot of other stuff I'm doing between all my companies. So, uh, hopefully this was valuable again, you guys be safe out there. Uh, manly, uh, I'll reach out to you inside of the, um, REI SIF community chat. Okay. Sweet. Uh, no problem. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Um, this will be out for uh, recording anyway. Or the recording will be out. So y'all be safe and let me know if you need anything. Peace out. Talk to you later.